Today, the Grand Am Rolex Sports Car Series is north of the border in Montreal, competing on a track named after the late Formula One legend Gilles Villeneuve, a Quebec native known for his exciting and flamboyant driving style. Last year, the circuit that bears his name lived up to his name, playing host to the closest and wildest finish in Grand Am history. David Donoghue and Darren Law get the victory. It's close, though. Oh, he's out of the there. Oh. Can you believe him with the Canadians? Wilkins. Get it. No, no, no. They got robbed. These days, everyone wants their own slice of Grand Am glory. Ricardo Zonda and Nick Johnson victorious at the Glen. The most recent round crowned Chrome Racing a two-time winner this year. I'm very happy. You know, after the weekend, I think this is the best for us. Now NASCAR stars Carl Edwards and Marcus Ambrose want in on this deal. The stock car duo make their Daytona prototype debut in the middle of an intense title fight and on a famed track known for producing close results. Cousin Carl, the Devil Racer, and a sports car cast ready to make this show a hit. Next, on Speed. Few tracks around the world can boast 30 Formula One Grand Prix. This famed venue can, but it's also found some new tenants of late in the NASCAR Nationwide Series and the Rolex Sports Car Series. It's Grand Am's third visit in as many years as Speed welcomes you to the Montreal 200 at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. Well, as you saw right there at the top of the show, one of the headlines, perhaps the biggest headline of this weekend's race, is Marcus Ambrose, Carl Edwards coming together in their Daytona prototype debut. Yes, what you just saw there was the heavily crashed Delara of Doran Racing. Weather is a real talking point here. This is on the outlap. Carl Edwards has crashed the Aflac Delara heavily. Marcus Ambrose is standing by with Chris Neville. Lee, we've had nine cup drivers behind the wheel this year. This weekend, it was going to be 11. Marcos, you were just getting your visor ready on your helmet. You looked up, and the car in the wall. Yeah, look, that's not what you want. Um, you know, I just hope Carl's all right. You know, uh, it's his first time in a sports car, and the rain's coming down, and these cars are treacherous on cold tyres. And uh, when something like that happens, I guess I'm, I'm just lucky that I'm not driving it. But, uh, you know, it was a, a great, great effort for us. You know, um, Kevin Doran and, and all these boys here just did a wonderful job to get us ready for this race. Um, you know, we felt really good about our chances today running in the top five and just a real shame for us. Um, just got to thank Aflac and iRacing and AU Wine for coming on board to try and help us out. It's definitely not the way that uh, we wanted to end this show. We didn't even get it started, really. Well, all the cars were making their way to the grid on slicks and then the rain came down. So obviously Carl caught out, but you guys had a chance to test the car. You've got a lot of running here this weekend. How much did you enjoy the Daytona prototype? Oh, look, it's just a great experience. Had to thank all the guys at Grand Dam. They've got a, a, a fantastic race car to drive. And uh, the, the Doran team and the whole crew on the 77 have done a wonderful job for us too to get us ready for here. But uh, we'll have to try again, I guess. Um, you know, it's just a real shame. Well, you've got one of your biggest fans up in our booth, and I know he's heartbroken right now. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lee. Sorry to all the fans that tuned in to watch us today. Just, uh, just a real blast. Yes, it's quite hard to believe, isn't it? And we're going to show you exactly what happened to Carl Edwards, who was very excited to be here at Montreal, Calvin. Coming off turn 10, it's about 35 miles an hour, low speed there, and he goes to this little kink here and starts to lose the car, corrects and just slams into that fence over on the right-hand side. Remember, these Daytona prototypes do not have traction control. We talked about the fact there's been some drizzling there on the parade laps, and Carl was just caught out on cold tires, it looks like. Hi everyone, Lee Diffie along with Calvin Fish here with you at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal. And yeah, weather is a talking point. We know how badly it can bite, but there are also plenty of other talking points. That is, this is round 10 of 12. We're winding down, only three to go. The pressure's on. Nowhere creates drama like this place, right? We've seen it the last couple of years that we've visited here at Montreal. It's a fantastic race circuit and the makeup of the race circuit, long, fast sections, heavy braking zones, really promotes overtaking. The race length, two hours. 
this means strategy will be different to the normal two hour 45 minute race we saw it here last year guys running out of fuel and today we have have weather to add to that mix as well there's never been a dull two hour format that's for sure let's get to some other headlines because there are plenty our most recent winner crone racing sadly is not here tracy crone team principal deciding not to bring the team there's there's more to that story there's some legal action going on there's a civil suit in progress between crone racing proto auto and Lola, the manufacturer. Hopefully that will be resolved soon. For the Borsche Daytona prototype cars, they have their rev limit raised to 9,600. That's the most they've had all of this season. Certainly put a spring in the step of both the Penske camps and the Brumos boys. That's created some talk, hasn't it? It really is. They <laughs> like it. A lot of the other teams don't. And an upcoming test. What an excitement we have here. Indianapolis Motor Speedway. First time that the Grand M cars will run at the Brickyard is this Thursday. A test on both configurations, the MotoGP circuit and the Grand Prix circuit. Hopefully a precursor for an event in the not too distant future. Did we tell you there is a championship at stake? Check out the points. It's nice and tight. Not as close as it's been throughout the year, but it is still very, very close. 14 points blanketing the top three. Now you could say that Michael Valiente is still in there and the Penske boys are still in there mathematically it's going to be tough for those so we will focus on those top three outfits running for this championship yes i did mention penske let's hear more from the man himself with kelly stavist well, Lee, it's been a, a bit of a frustrating year for the Penske boys who have a couple of podiums but yet to find victory lane. Roger, it's been ages since we've seen you field a sports car for a full season and not come away with at least one win. Three races to go here. How important is it for you to find victory here in your first season of Grand Am? Well, I think uh, it's been a very competitive season. Obviously, uh, got some great teams out there we've been racing against. Uh, I think the main thing for us is trying to equalize uh, the Porsche engine, you know, with the big V8s. And the series has been trying to do a good job on that. I guess they gave us uh, a few more RPM this weekend. Some people are happy with it. We certainly are, but maybe the competitors. But it seems uh, from a qualifying perspective, the times during practice yesterday were more even. So I think it's up to our driver today with rain. It's going to be very interesting. But uh, it's a great series and uh, some great teams and we just got to figure out how to beat them and that rain is coming down what kind of decisions are you making now on uh, maybe to when to make that change into the the water the rain tires well i think they're going to give us a chance to put rains on it'd be very dangerous for everybody to go out on slicks right now i think we'll come back in put rains on and we'll see what happens these two guys are great in the rain uh, hopefully uh, we can bring it home all right thanks roger they'll start third could this be their day? We'll find out. Hey, it's not all about Daytona prototypes, GT cars as well. This was at the most recent round at Watkins Glen. These guys fight hard. They do. Eric likes to literally attack Nick Ham there. And then later in the event, a great debut race, the 48 machine saw action with a 10. And at the end of the day, it was a repeat win there at the Glen for the 69 machine. Jeff Siegel and Mia Lassentado, a great performance. Let's turn to the GT points in the championship race. It's not as tight as DP. 31 points the margin between the Farnbacher boys. However, they're not letting up. They're not. They continue to execute. Lee Keen grabbed the pole position here yesterday, his third consecutive pole position. And what that does, that keeps them out of the action when they go down into that first turn. Very critical part of a championship run. How about our defending champs? There's a reason why you only see Kelly Collins by himself in second. Chris Neville tells us why. Well, Paul Edwards didn't get to compete at Watkins Glen because of a sh shoulder injury he got from a mountain biking accident. Now, Paul, you've had a couple weeks off, a lot of physical therapy. Is that shoulder ready for a race? Oh, yeah. You know, I've been doing a lot of physical therapy, like you say, in acupuncture. I had a test yesterday. Um, even Grand Am and NASCAR were working with me, and they were real great to have a local anesthetic net needed uh, for me if I needed it. Um, I don't, just a couple uh, patches that help numb it a little bit. And uh, some drinking made even I found uh, helps the achy joint. So no, I think we'll do good. You know, Kelly's fourth on the, on the, on the grid right now and uh, the car's running real good. So I expect a good result. I'll just keep strong. Well, the drinking mate guys are still looking for that first victory. Let's swing over here. We'll take a look at their computer where we've got a weather map. And you can see up here, this is where we are, and this is the wave of weather that's moving through right now. So the good thing is, is we've got some clear skies, it looks like, on the back side of that weather. And hopefully this big mess, this big sloppy mess here is going to shoot to the north of us. So this rain we have right now, hopefully it's going to dry out. Well, fuel strategy played into the hands of Robin Liddell last year, who won the GT class. But Robin, with this uh, rain, a number of factors could come into play today. What will it take for you to repeat here at Montreal? 
Well, I think obviously, I mean, it looks like it's going to be a, a race with showers potentially. It's going to be a really tough uh, circuit and tough race because it's essentially a street track with not a lot of runoff. Mostly you've got walls and Armco barrier coming out of the turns. As we saw there, we've already fallen victim to one car just on the on the parade lap there. But uh, so it's going to be very, very tricky. It's going to be a lot of focus, high concentration. but. You know, we just need to good, do a good job in the pit, stay out of trouble on track, and uh, we had a good car in the, in the dry, and obviously we, we think we'll be competitive in the wet. It's been a bit of an up and down season for you guys. What are you guys looking to accomplish here in these last few races? Well, we just want to try and win as many races as possible. I mean, that's always our goal, and especially when you're not in the running for a championship, really, as we are, and then obviously you just try to go out there and just maximize your 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 uh, potential. And uh, I mean, we've got nothing to lose when you're in a position at this point in the season when you know, you've, you're know you protecting a points lead that isn't huge. Obviously, you drive more with your head. Right now, we can afford to throw caution to the wind and just try and get the best results we can. So obviously, we'll be looking to do that again today. And um, you know, as I said, we've got a good car. And uh, the only question mark for us is how our visibility is in the wet conditions, which was a problem at New Jersey. But the guys have worked hard to try and improve that situation. And we think we'll be good. His teammate, Andrew Davis, starts fifthly. And the boys were told earlier today at the driver's meeting if weather comes into play before the start of the race, they will be enabled to come back to pit road and put wet weather tyres on. You see the 45, the Orbit, BMW powered Riley on pit road. So too, the other BMW there. And that is a very torn up Aflac Delara for Kevin Doran and his drivers, Marcus Ambrose and Carl Edwards, a day to forget. It was setting up to be a super weekend for the NASCAR Sprint Cup stars. They were doing very, very well, but they will not make the start of this race. Boy, it's going to be interesting, just like it was a year ago. Do you remember that? The Gaines Cohen Ganassi rivalry, wild stuff. And there are a lot, there's a lot more to come here today. You're watching Grand Am live on Speed. Speed's coverage of the Rolex Sports Car Series is presented on speed by Rolex, a crown for every achievement. And brought to you in part by Pirelli. Power is nothing without control. Control is what the drivers are going to need to demonstrate today, that's for sure. And here is the playground it will all unfold on. Let's go to the Pirelli track map with Calvin. Well, just a fantastic racetrack here. Montreal, 14 turns, just over 2.7 miles. So much history. And when you look at the track configuration, the action, you can anticipate it to start very early here, right down in turns one and two. We saw that here last year. It gets really tight down through there. And you look up the makeup of the rest of the circuit, a lot of long, fast sections, followed by heavy brake zones. Now, the key is this year, many of these sections through here have been resurfaced. They're really low on grip in the dry, and certainly in the wet, we can see what sort of action can happen there. This corner here that Carl Edwards was coming up, 35 miles an hour through there, and then you reach a terminal speed of 176 as you approach that final chicane. So the cars are rolling. Now, quick reminder about the Chip Foose Pirelli Edition Ford Flex giveaway. As many of you will know, to have a chance of winning this special Pirelli Edition Ford Flex designed by Chip Foose, just watch today's broadcast. You need to look for a special Pirelli code word. And once you do identify that, go to the website grand-am.com forward slash Foose. Enter the prize word to have a chance at winning. Keep your eyes out for that special code word. We'll show that today and also at the next round in Salt Lake City. And the winners will be heading to the grand finale at Homestead Miami Speedway. Activity on pit lane. Well, just the drivers have gone out on this reconnaissance lap and just feeling out how much grip there is to deal with if they could stay on slicks. Doesn't look like there's a lot of rain falling right now. So ideally, I'd like to stay on those slick tires but it's really treacherous and certainly for the championship contenders like this man, Scott Pruitt and the 01 machine, you have to be cautious here. You can't afford to take any risks. It's a tough call, isn't it? It's a little bit that the rain comes, it goes away. Chris knows what it's like. He's on pit lane. Tell us more. Yeah, guys, that rain is still just kind of spitting down here. Picked up for a minute, got things wet again, but now it has stopped, and it looks like just about everybody is deciding to go to rain tires. I was talking to Tim Keene, and he said, I don't think we're going to do it. Scott's going to feel out the racetrack, but now you can see the 01 car going with slick tires. These guys know they have a championship to win. You better play it a little bit conservative this time. You see the wet tires going on there, the Pirelli wets. There's no intermediate tire available to these teams. It's really just the slick and the wet tires, so... 
it's a bit of a gamble if you start on slicks and I think when you're leading a championship like Scott Pruitt and the Ganassi team that would be too big a risk to take right now so there may be someone middle of the pack will stay on slicks they may have an advantage if it dries out certainly but when you have that championship lead this is the decision to make this is only the I'm guessing here third or fourth time that Bert Pruitt has actually started the race and again, he did a good job in qualifying that 01 Telmex Lexus Riley for Ganassi, starting on the front row for every race except the Rolex 24. Well, the big headlines, Ambrose and Edwards in this race, no longer. Carl Edwards is going to tell us why with Kelly Stavist. Well, Lee, you know we've seen some of the biggest names in sports car racing have the same sort of incident in the recon laps. Carl, you're not the first to do it, but what happened out there? <laughs> that's good to know. Other people have wrecked that early because that's a new record for me. Um, First of all, I have to thank Kevin Doran, Marcus Ambrose, Aflac, Subway, who came on board, uh, AU Vineyards, and, and iRacing.com. What got me there is uh, is two things. These tires uh, with these cars take so long to uh, to get grip. It's so much different than what I'm used to. I pulled out here and I actually thought I had a flat to begin with, and um, and I, I worked the tires in as, as good as I can. It started sprinkling just a little bit, and I just got a little too aggressive in a medium speed corner there and I mean it, it swapped and um, I was at full lock and just feel terrible for these guys they put so much effort in I, I really appreciate everyone having me here and hopefully I can do this again and make up for it yeah you did get a little bit of time between testing and yeah. the practices here what were your impressions of this Daytona prototype uh, this is a fun class that's that's the bottom line these these people have a lot of fun um, especially when you know when you don't wreck uh, that, that part wasn't fun but the, the whole atmosphere here is great the people are great that the racing is spectacular and these drivers they're world-class they're um, it's it's they impressed me a, a huge amount so uh, once again Kevin Doran and all the guys who worked on this car um, I apologize to him uh, that's a hard way to learn that lesson right there we totally sure hope to see you back thanks Carl thank you we looked at that uh, replay, we actually saw something happen there. And now we're going to look at this dynamic duo, Lee. Well, the boys were all keyed up for a massive weekend. And they went about things very methodically. Carl said he was getting used to it. Marcus, of course, with his V8 supercar experience in Australia, was more used to this kind of car. And Carl was on a steep learning curve. But Marcus said he did very, very well and got up to speed very quickly. However, when we were watching that replay while Carl right. was talking to Kelly, you made an observation. Yeah, we see the aftermath here of the crash after he's hit the wall, but as he's coming through that little left-hand kink just before there, there's the white stripe line you can see, and he got that left side rear tire, the driving wheel on there. Let's watch it again. He's coming off the hip, and he has a little wiggle right there, then he's back on the power, looks straight. Then watch the left side. He gets on that white line. That's going to generate wheel spin on the left side. The right side will continue to drive, so the car was going to the left. Then he corrected it, and that's what shot him across the racetrack. So just bad luck and just got caught out by the conditions and the cold tires he'll be back as you heard him say he would like to do this before for ambrose he's raced in grand am before many years ago at the rolex 24 in gt but this was the first time for both of them in daytona prototypes now for them they will just focus on the nationwide race here tomorrow more from montreal right after this We're back live here at Montreal for the Montreal 200 Round 10 of the Rolex Sports Car Series for 2009. One thing about Grand Am is that it produces incredibly close finishes and none closer than here 12 months ago. Look at that. 64 thousandths of a second, the closest winning margin ever in Grand Am history. Do you remember it? How could you forget it? The five-year drought is finally over. We had a straightaway lead on everybody, but obviously it was about 100 feet too short. You know, we thought we had it. Um, it's it just, we, we tried to play the fuel too tight. It's the Brumos Porsche. David Donahue and Darren Law get the victory. It's close though. Oh, he's out of the out of the We really didn't have the, the, the fastest car uh, here, but we played the strategy well and uh, we saved enough fuel to make it to the end and that last lap was unbelievable to see that other course slow and just to make that last minute call to go right and uh, Antonio Garcia went left and there we are we it was unbelievable I mean it was just uh, it, it hard to describe the feeling I can still remember it uh, right now and to be back here is great and we're just hoping we've got the pace to, to be right up front again this year.
Wonderful oh. moment for the Canadian team. Darren Law told me earlier this weekend, I can't wait to get through this weekend because <laughs> when anyone talks about Montreal, they remind me of that final lap. I said, how do you think I feel, mate? I yeah. gave you the win. <laughs> you didn't get it. We keep reliving it for you. <laughs> so cars rolling and we're getting set. There's been a delayed start, of course, for the Carl Edwards crash and of course weather and it's going to be just one of those afternoons same as always folks as we go to the race analysis two classes on the track at the same time the big point of difference there is right at the bottom it really is two hours now mandatory pit stop before the first 45 minutes is complete has to be made and that's really going to be a crucial part in this strategy remember when you're on a fuel map or when you're running in the rain you save a lot of fuel last year we saw guys running out in the dry this rain will certainly affect that fuel mileage the cars will get and could put a lot of these teams on a one-stop strategy if they wait until around that 45-minute mark. People talk about a wonderful time for AIM Autosport. And young Brian Frizzell, who was with AIM last year, switched to Wayne Taylor's SunTrust Racing this year. And here he is, the defending race winner. And he is in the championship hunt. He and Max Angelelli can still win the 2009 Grand Am Rolex Sports Car Series. He needs a good start. No mistakes. Keep it straight. And hand it over to his teammate. They have formed quite a nice duo, that's for sure. He's really done a tremendous job. He had the unfortunate incident at Barber that really cost the team in the championship. Now we're on board here with a 55 car. The Scott Tucker saw him in the gym this morning. He's pumped up for today's race. He said, I haven't really driven this car in the wet very much, so it's going to be a new experience for me. But this team is coming off a podium finish at the last round at Watkins Glen. Did you get lost? We're looking for the coffee machine. <laughs> 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 to the 58. And David uh, Donahue and Darren Law continue to change up the strategy. David qualifying this time round, but a little hiccup for these boys post qualifying. Yeah, they qualified fourth. They really looked to be on song. They looked like two Porsches on the second row, and then they had a problem in uh, post qualifying tech. Car was four pounds underweight, so they go to the back of the Daytona prototype field. And uh, the reason David is starting, he said, I wanted to give Darren the chance for redemption here at the end here today. From the 58 to the 61. Yes, we've been talking a lot about AIM Autosport. This is young Mark Wilkins, who shared that win with Brian Frizzell last year. This team won twice last year. They have yet to win this year. And they're doubling up. There's another There's another car under the AIM Autosport umbrella. Huge uh, support here for them, even though the team is not from the Montreal area. They're from the Toronto area. A lot of uh, fan base, a lot of family and friends supporting uh, this team. So we wish them well. They've also got Motorola on board this weekend supporting the team as well. Now we see Nick Cam on board that GT machine. His teammate, Sylvain Tremblay, has so many fond memories of this racetrack. And Nick this morning, prior to the driver's meeting, was telling us, he said, Syl is really on form this weekend. Look for him to go to the front when I turn it over to him. We did have one more on board camera to show you, and that was the 77. <laughs> now longer, not in the race. Chris. Well, you guys are talking some change driver strategies, also some fuel strategies. Talking to these teams, since it is not raining and this track is dry, and they're thinking they're going to be coming back to pit lane in about 8 to 10 laps to get slick tires. Unless we get some more water, those rain tires are going to be burning up. So, Calvin, get your calculator out. Start doing your fuel strategy when these guys are coming in in about 8 to 10 laps and see how that plays out in this race. Yeah, it's going to be changing fast. I mean, I think the key is to be flexible. Don't get locked into a strategy. You've got to change your strategy along with the weather today. Two cars starting from pit lane. That is the Orbit BMW, Bill Lester behind the wheel, and also the 21, Matt Connolly uh, Pontiac with Chris Green behind the wheel. So we're getting ready to go green. Very mixed weather conditions, mixed track conditions. You heard Chris's update there about things may dry out and those wet weather tires will burn up fairly quickly. Let's see how we go. Two of the three in the fight for the championship start on the front row. It's a familiar scene here at Montreal. Gaines Co. V. Ganassi. John Fogarty was blistering in qualifying yesterday. Great run. Green flag flies. We're away here in Canada. Scott Pruitt v. John Fogarty. These guys have a lot of history. Now look at the Penske Porsche on the inside. Take it easy, guys. Take it easy as they tiptoe through. Ruma Duma, look down at the inside. There we see Mark Wilkins looking for the long way around. Sometimes in the wet, that will give you a little bit more grip. Mark Patterson turns it around, tries to get on the power, sends it sideways with a shank machine. The last wet race we had at New Jersey Motorsports Park, Mark was in an opening lap incident there as well. This one, no damage done, a simple spin. However, he's lost position. The GT field will be coming through as well. They've just hit the front straight. They're getting ready for their start. How about the qualifying performance from the car on the right-hand side? Lee Keener was sensational, but Tom Sutherland, 
This is an awesome performance in that red Mazda RX-8. Gets the jump. Wow, what a performance he's putting in here this weekend. Front row qualifying position. Mark Patterson is still in the middle of the track. Here comes the GT field. Is that red Mazda, who had their first podium finish last round at Watkins Glen, leading the pack? The race's edge machine gets by Patterson. Mark is building back up to speed. Lee Keen, then Nick Ham, then Kelly Collins. I think just a really smart move by Lee Keen there. He recognized he didn't really get a good start. Don't fight it out. Think of the big picture in the championship. That's what they've been doing very well this season. Eric Lux is feeling speedy early on. He gets by Kelly Collins, who's gingerly making his way around. There goes Lux. Two positions in two corners. Well, the nice thing about that Porsche, Lee, is it'll put the power down really well. It's got the weight of the engine kind of hanging over that rear axle. And look at him go. This lightweight Mazda will struggle for grip here a little bit in these conditions. So this is your GT leader, Tom Sutherland, as they work their way around on the opening lap. A siding lap, an out lap, very different to your first race lap. Dumas in second, as you can see, chasing John Fogarty. Opening lap done. Well, Dumas has nothing to lose. They just want to win races. They're really out of this title hunt unless a lot of things happen to the guys in front of them. So he's looking for a win. But we talk about the 01 machine, the 99 machine. They say, we are just racing each other. Well, they're doing it at the front of the pack. Pruitt dropping back a little bit in these wet conditions. 58 on pit road. David Donahue brings the Brumos Porsche in. Looks like he's changing the slick tyres, so they're the first of the front running teams, or the speedier team, should I say. Obviously, they had to start at the back of the pack due to that technical infraction, but they're going to wets early and hoping that this race will come to them. They deserve it. And again, same situation, nothing to lose. This car is not in the championship hunt. Why not roll the dice? Let's give it a go, see how it works. I think it's a great call because also they've now made that mandatory stop, so if there's a yellow, they will leapfrog everyone else if other people take that opportunity to pit, Chris. Well, I'm with you on that. I think it's also a great call that they came to pit lane. You talked about that technical infraction that sent them back to the grid. The car was four pounds light after qualifying. Talking to the team, they said the reason it was four pounds light was because we ran so much yesterday. We didn't anticipate running that much. And what happened is we just wore so much of the brakes off, so much brake pads, some rotor wear, and the car just came up light. So they obviously were cutting it very thin on the weight of that car. And just with as much, as much time as we ran yesterday, car just burn that weight off and it just shows you how competitive this Daytona prototype field is these teams are really willing to risk look at him fight the wheel there David Donahue looking for grip on these slick tires he's gonna struggle to keep that GT car behind him right now I think with the conditions as they are right now but it may come to him he's gonna take it there he goes Tom Sutherland just flashes by in that GT car he's got more grip right now so at the moment it's creating extra work for David Donahue but will it work out in several laps time nobody's faster in GT than Eric Lux for fun buckle lols look at this young man go he has reeled in that Racers Edge Mazda as quick as you like. Well, the other thing you can do when you've got two cars on your team, you can split the strategies. I mean, maybe they went for a wet setup on Eric Lux, and that's why he's a little bit quicker than the 87 right now. And also Lee Keen will certainly be in a, being a little bit more conservative in attacking this racetrack in these type of conditions. Yeah, he said, let's not talk about championship. Let's take it one race at a time. Lux has gone from eighth to second in GT. Then Lee Keen, Nick Ham, Max Hyatt is in there doing a nice job as well. And how about the 66 for TRG? We talk about NASCAR competitors in Grand Am. Brendan Gorn is making his Rolex Series debut and has done a nice job. He's teaming up with Andy Lally and Andy's been handing out the praise. He said Brendan has done a great job so far this weekend. Look at that 21 car. He is flying. I'd have to say the speed differential between him and the rest of the GT pack, I'd imagine that he may have started from pit lane on slicks. We'll try and get that confirmed, but he has a lot more speed than the rest of these guys right now. Starting to see somewhat of a dry line forming, aren't we? There's Andrew Davis in the Stevenson Motorsport Pontiac. The blue, white and red machine right there. Then Chris Green is powering his way through in the Matt Connolly machine ahead of Brendan Gorn and Joe Foster in the Dempsey Racing Mazda on the inside in 40. Gorn makes a move on Joe Foster. Nice clean move there and Joe fights his way back. He recognizes he's gonna have the inside line for this next corner. This is where Patterson lost it right there. He was on the inside of Mark Wilkins. And when you've got the steering wheel just cut a little bit more and you're trying to put the power down, that will exceed the threshold of the tire and you'll spin in a heartbeat. So big action here in the middle of the GT pack. For the lead overall, Romain Dumas is pressuring John Fogarty. 
He is really starting to apply the pressure. He's less than half a second away from Fogarty as Kevin Butler and Andy Lally enjoy watching their new boy at TRG. Quick reminder for you that next Saturday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, live here on Speed, you can catch the next round of the NASCAR Capping World Truck Series. Hard at work on Labor Day weekend. Watch Hornaday, Crafton, Skinner, and, of course, Brendan Gorn, who is in our race here today, tackle Iowa Speedway for the first time. That's the NASCAR Capping World Truck Series here on Speed, 9.30 p.m next Saturday night. John Ferrano has just been involved in an incident with Scott Tucker up at the Turn 10 hairpin and has damage on the front left of this car. Here we see it just slides down the inside inside of John Pugh and just literally attacks Scott Tucker as he turns into the Turn 10 hairpin. Then they get hooked up for a little bit and we're on board with Scott Tucker here. Watch for this car to flash into his right side there. Just T-bones him, knocks him wide. We'll have to wait and see if there's any further damage to the 55 machine, but it's cost the 51. Chris is right down there. So, oh, guys, trying to check out a couple of different things down here, trying to do some work on the left rear corner of this car, also in pit lane. We're starting to get some of our leaders in. 12 car in, 10 car in. Everybody's starting to come in for slicks. Main reason is because the 58 car just flashed by, and it is now doing times that are just as quick as everybody else on the wet rubber. So next time David Donahue goes by, I'm sure he's going to even be faster. 12 cars down and away, 10 cars still up in the air, just trying to get these slicks on. Donahue circulating at the moment, 14th overall. Last time round, 149. John Fogarty a 147.6. That'll give you a little bit of an indication. SunTrust boys hard at work. Tires changed, Frizzell is released. Well, this could be significant, because remember, these guys are trying to catch up to the U1 and the 99 in the championship after a couple of bad rounds. So making that change early, that can be significant. That can gain you four or five seconds if the timing is right. Just caught our overall leader. Here he is, John Fogarty. Never won at this track, the Gainsco team. They're looking to change that little blip on the team's resume here today. So far, so good. Third consecutive pull for John Fogarty, and there we see the gap all the way back there to Pruitt, who's now in second position, and Mark Wilkins running third with the pit stops by the other front runners. Good start from young Canadian driver uh, Mike Forrest as well. Mike's in fourth overall. Remember, there's been a little bit of jostling. Several cars have come into pits, so it's elevated him somewhat, but a good, solid start. Ricky Taylor will take over the second part of this race. So the boys are switching it up. Here's Pruitt. Yeah, I was going to say, if he's going to try and fight through that gaggle of GT traffic, that would cost him dearly. So they had to make the call there. Timmy Keane brings he down pit lane, and here is our leader, Fogarty. He will stay in the car. He's not at the 30-minute mark, so expect him to stay in. He'll be in a rhythm with his racetrack, so if it dries out, that's the ideal scenario. He can read the conditions. He'll know where it's a little slicker rather than throwing a fresh driver in. Remember one of the points on our race analysis. Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Tom Sutherland just dropping the car. He was one of the first GT cars to come in and get on the slick tires. So that team making that call. The 01 car, Scott Pruitt, staying behind the wheel as the games go 99 just goes by. So John Fogarty's still going to stay in front of the 01 car. Let me get that. Good stop by the good stop by the Telmex guys. Pruitt back out. 61 car, the winning car from last year, also in. Mark Wilkins staying behind the wheel as they're going to slick tires too, guys. There you see Pruitt there struggling for grip, nearly understood off the racetrack, trying to get the power down. And this is where the crews really earn their money. If you are faster on those tire changes, normally it's hidden within the fuel stop, but when you get a condition like this where there's only a splash of fuel going in, it can make a big, big difference. Cal, that's where these teams are learning their money. This is also where these drivers are going to be earning their money. These outlaps on these cold tires. This is something that these drivers have been struggling with all weekend is getting these slick tires up to temperature. Not a lot of grip on this racetrack, not very abrasive. So it takes a lot of laps to build temp, even yesterday when it was much warmer. So these outlaps today on these slick cold tires going to be very interesting to see who can click off the quick times. Some of the teams going to adding a little bit more downforce, also starting with higher air pressure to try and get the car up to speed quicker. Kelly. The 86 Farnbacher Lowell's Porsche is in there. They were leading Eric Lux, who had a blistering start, but now they're going to the slicks, taking off those wet tires. Their teammates in the 87 already had the slicks on, so they should be good to go. We also saw the 48 of Miller Barrett Racing come in. 
And what a start they've had. Dave Lacey going from 12th to 6th in one lap. He's Canadian. He says that's what helps him here in the wet conditions, that he deals with it all the time. And 86 is out of here and on its way. David Donahue is absolutely flying out on track. 1 minute 40 was his last lap time, as much as 8 seconds quicker than the next closest car. So that early gamble starting to pay off, but he's a good distance back. He's got a lot of ground to catch up, but at that pace, he will be making up ground rapidly. We ride with David now. 175 miles an hour as he now hits the brake for that final chicane. 64 miles an hour minimum speed through there in ideal conditions. And this is where they lost it last year. A few feet from that stripe. All of a sudden, he's in eighth place overall. And just a few laps ago, he was nearly a minute behind. He's now only 34 seconds behind race leader, his teammate, incidentally, JC France. We'll update you on the progress of the Brumos Porsche when we come back. Speed's coverage of the Rolex Sports Car Series is presented on speed by Touch of Grey. Get rid of some grey, never all. Glad you could be with us back at Montreal. You're watching Grand Am live here on speed. You're also watching Penske racing driver Romain Dumas, the Frenchman, the very fast Frenchman, out in front. He's got a three-second gap over John Fogarty. The 59 Brumos Porsche of JC France was in the lead. However, he's yet to pit for those slick, those dry weather tyres. And this man here is running away with it. First time the 59 has led a Grand Am race, incidentally, since the Rolex 24 earlier this year. And JC will really be struggling now on these wet tyres. You can see the track is almost dry as the leaders now are getting down to about two or three seconds from their qualifying pace. of so the track certainly has good grip right now. But JC, with these wet weather tyres, they'll just be squirming around you don't have the contact patch to put the power down anymore the braking will be atrocious so he'll struggle i'm surprised they're keeping him out there they need to pit they need to pit now all right what's the feeling in the penske camp with them in the lead right now kelly well timo bernard watching romain dema there in the lead timo you guys are giving some rpms back do you think this is your best chance to win yet this season i mean we had a lot of races this year uh we had, we had a lot of races where at the end we had some bad luck and didn't get a podium or a victory. Right now it's looking very good, but the race is still long to go. And right now Penske, uh, Team Penske did a great pit stop. I mean, Romain's doing a good job out there. We hope to get a victory for the Verizon Wireless team, but we'll see. I mean, it's still a long way to go. I hope to, to do my best at the end of the race, and we don't know what the weather is going to do. So, But at, at the moment, it's looking really good. Yeah. You guys have come off multiple championships, and this year has been a bit of a struggle. What has it been like to be a part of that and have a season quite like you've had? I mean, we had a, a, a tough season this year for sure. Uh, for a long time, we haven't we haven't won. We haven't uh, been on the podium for five races, but th that's that's motorsport as well. And uh, we have to learn from it. We learn every race weekend. And I think at, from the from the rules, we've been also a little bit on the bad part, you know. But now we've given back some RPMs. It helps as well. So we're doing it's not so bad, our way. Thanks, Timo. Chris. Darren Law is anxiously awaiting his turn behind the wheel of 58. Darren, last year you came within inches of winning this race. How gut-wrenching was that last 100 feet? That was, uh, Chris, that was tough, man. I, I always say that's probably the worst podium position I've ever had. I, I mean, we're happy to be there, but that was tough. But JC France making a lot of noise as he's doing his pit stop there. Now, the car has a lot of speed this weekend. You were going to start in the front row, but you had to start at the back. Can you guys overcome that? I think so, you know what, um, had it been a dry start, it might have been really tough. It's hard to pass here, but with the wet conditions and everyone having to come in and out and switch tires, it's given us a chance to get back into the fight, so uh, we're hoping. Well, they're looking like they're in a good position, and JC France was just in, grabbed a set of slick tires, he's back out on the track, guys. Hey, speaking of a fight, John Fogarty is taking it to Romain Dumas. He was 1.4 seconds faster than Dumas last time around, so the chase is on at the front. Scott Pruitt is third, Brian Frizzell, who we ride with, is in fourth place, and he's got just a slight margin over David Donahue in fifth. Mark Wilkins is sixth. Christoph Bouchou has taken over from Scott Tucker. He's in seventh. Then Forrest, Buddy Rice, and Rob Finlay. That's your top ten. 
Well, certainly we're looking here at Brian Frizzell. He's done a nice job here, kept it nice and clean. He's currently running fourth, a little bit away from the front running pack, the top three, but Dumar has certainly answered the challenge that Fogarty put to him. He just ran the fast lap, 134.9, which is quicker than Fogarty's last lap. So certainly there's an ebb and flow to this race as the conditions change. And certainly who has guesstimated the right setup? Did any of these guys go soft to really account for what was deemed to be a predictable rain race? Now it's dry. Who's going to be struggling in these conditions? You know, what a popular answer was earlier before the race uh, we're kind of in between yeah <laughs> a half dry half wet setup we don't really know what that is but we'll give it a shot David Donahue now on the charge he's up to fifth and starting to put the pressure on Brian Frizzell last lap he was three tenths faster than Brian closing that gap gradually tell you a little update on uh, GT Lee Keane out there and has a handy margin he leads the pole man and championship leader in gt leads over chris green and kelly collins in third nick ham is fourth and andrew davis is fifth that's your top five in gt at the moment you're watching a top five battle here overall and in daytona prototypes the sun trust delara up against the brumos porsche brian frizzell david donahue you see those big patches through those slow low speed corners that's where it's been resurfaced since last year it's the perfect combination at Asphalt. They've really researched it thoroughly to make sure they have the right combination that will last this year with the big nationwide cars attacking this racetrack tomorrow. The track was breaking up last year. They think they've got the fix. But right now, this Porsche, 400 more RPMs, doesn't really give it a lot more horsepower, but what it does, it really fills those torque gaps. Oh, JC, he'd done a couple of laps on those slick tires. He should have had temperature. Did he get involved with someone? That may be down in the 6-7 area. It's hard to tell from this angle. How badly damaged is that car? Is it cosmetic? He will get it back for the Brumos boys to assess the damage. That is the 6-7 chicane, so he's got a long way to go. Over half a lap now. How much of that body work and tyre will flail around and leave itself on the racetrack? And these are the invariables that happen during a championship season. If anything falls off this car, does one of the championship contenders come across it? We are getting a report that the six, the Mike Shank Racing Ford with Michael Valiente behind the wheel was involved with the 59 of JC France. Let's go to a replay. This is coming down into one of the earlier chicanes. Here we see JC just locking it up. They go through three and four. And then they come down. Oh, and uh, John tried to slide out from underneath the tail there of JC and just clips him and turns him around and hard into that wall. That is a high speed section, about 130 miles an hour right there. And we understand that's Michael Valiente in the car now. They've done a driver change when they stop for their slick tires. That's Michael there trying to make his way to the front. Keep in mind, Valiente is fourth in this championship chase. He was trying to get to the front as quick as he could. France has brought the car to pit road, and the Brumos boys will assess this. It doesn't look good. Hour and 36 and a half minutes remaining, and debris starting to fly all over pit road. And we have been told by race control a uh, stop and go for Michael Valiente and the Mike Shank racing car. And you see all those bits flying off the bodywork, the little wicker bills. They can cut down someone else's tire in a heartbeat. Well, guys, this car obviously slapped the wall real hard on the right side. The team looking at this right rear corner trying to assess any uh, suspension damage in there. And JC shuts the car off, so I think this is going to be a little bit longer fix than these guys were hoping. I think they were just hoping they were going to slap some new rear tires on the car. But definitely uh, this right rear corner, yeah, we've got a lot of suspension under the car here that's bent up. So this car is either going to be here in pit lane for quite a while trying to fix that suspension or it's going to have to go back to the hauler. What a dramatically different end of the season in 2009 to what it was in 08. JC and Joao Barbosa climbed to third in the championship last year, not this year.
for the first time ever, there was a fairly healthy carrot dangled in the front of driver's eyes participating in those four series in the UK that you can see on that graphic. It's all about the Sunoco Driver Challenge. And whoever amasses the most points, and there's more to it than simply that, by the end of season 2009, they will win a spot in a Daytona prototype at next year's Rolex 24. Who's leading the way this week, Cal? Well, Rob Garofal still has the lead, but you notice his point. That's an average point score. has gone down since the last round. One of his co-drivers at the last race had a bit of a problem. They didn't have a great result, so his average point score has gone down. So it's now pretty tight at the top, less than 10 points. So that's the update. We ride with the 70 of Nick Ham in the fresh from Florida Castrol Speed Source Mazda RX-8. He just got by Chris Green while we're in the commercial break. Good job from this young Canadian driver in the 21, considering he started from pit road. Oh, fantastic. They took the gamble, put him on slicks, and he just drove through the field. And uh, we haven't seen much of Chris, certainly, in Grand Am racing, but a good little racer in road racing. Uh, won a Canadian karting championship, ran in the Barber Dodge Pro Series, and uh, just really spectacular result for the team that had a podium finish here last year. Chris is driving for Matt Connolly Motorsports, and Matt's standing by with Kelly. And as you watch Chris going around in second place, this is his first time in the Grand Am Series. You must be pretty impressed, Matt. Well, he had, he had quite a learning curve. He uh, had a lot of track excursions about three or four times, flat spotted a couple sets of tires, didn't hit anything, but he's showing, he's showing his learning curve. He's showing his true ability. Obviously, when you come out in a situation like this, you don't worry about points. You can really just go for it. But what kind of expectations did you have with Chris and Diego behind the wheel here? Well, we had, we had Diego last year all season. We had three podiums, including a third place here. We led 105 laps. We've lost. We never had that win yet. I think with Chris and Diego, we got it. All right. Good luck out there. Thank you. So far, so good. However, Chris Green has lost a couple of positions in the last lap to Kelly Collins and Nick Ham, which we saw when we first came back. But still, for this car, it is not the most recent, not the most up-to-date up uh, Pontiac. It is the older GTO R, unlike the GXPR that just went by it. But Matt Connolly and his guys do very nicely with limited resources. Oh, Christoph Bouchou has shortcut the turn 13-14 chicane coming onto the front straight. And that was an issue that was brought up in the driver's meeting this morning. If you cut that chicane, you can't stop or you're getting challenged for position. As long as you don't gain anything, now he's wide again. Whoa, he's really pushing hard. One of the most aggressive drivers in the series coming off a podium finish at the last round at the Glen. But Mark Raffoff told the drivers, if you gain position through that chicane, you have to give it back. If you gain time, you have to give it back immediately. They'll be analyzing that. And if you don't, you will pay the price. Speaking of gaining time, look at the Red Dragon. John Fogarty has reeled in Romain Dumas. We were talking about the weather yesterday, and he said, John said, I'll tell you something you may not know about me. I said, what? He said, I didn't do it for the whole time. He said, but for a very brief time during my college days, I did a major in meteorology. <laughs> and he said, it hasn't really helped me that much. He said, but I do find it quite interesting. That would certainly have come in handy today with everyone scrambling and scratching their heads, looking at the sky throughout this morning's hours, just wondering what we'd see at race time. But Roman Dumas certainly feeling the pressure. Fogarty has dropped it down into the mid-33 range. And Dumas is stuck in the 34. So certainly the 99 car has a lot of speed. Remember, they're four points behind in the championship, and right now Pruitt runs behind them. Both Riley chassis cars. It's a Porsche power plant in the 12, and it is a Pontiac power plant in the 99. And they're also looking at their options for next year, certainly with GM support going away. Will they stay here with this power plant? Spoke to Bob Stallings this morning. He said there's one other very good option we're looking at. I should know more in a couple of weeks. What a contrast as far as experience on circuit Gilles Villeneuve. In the Verizon Wireless Penske Porsche, neither driver had driven here before. In the 99, these boys have driven here quite a bit. Back to their open wheel experience in the Atlantic Series and including the last two years here in Grand Am Series competition. Fogarty got a great launch there off that chicane. He really had a lot of exit speed. Now he goes down to the outside, really working Dumas over. He'll cut back to the inside. Who can get the power down best? This is the long stretch, 35 miles an hour, an acceleration run up to 175 miles an hour plus. Fogarty tucked right under the rear wing of Dumas. He's going to be defensive. There's traffic up ahead. Romain is going to have to be decisive. We know that he is that. So he's got the 86 Feinbacher Lulls, Porsche to get by first and he can't quite do it there. Into that final complex and onto the front straight. Watch them down into one. 
But remember the big picture. Fogarty's got a championship to think about. Duma has nothing to lose right now, the way the championship standings are. He, Roger Penske, Timo Bernard, they want victory. There is a big gap. There's a substantial gap between this car here, the 99, and the next in line, which is Scott Pruitt in third place. It's in excess of 10 seconds. Make it 13 seconds between Fogarty and Pruitt. So there's no immediate pressure from behind. John can go for it. He can, and they were without their regular engineer, Kyle Brandon, here yesterday during practice and qualifying. Kyle had his appendix out on Wednesday, but insisted to the boss, Bob Stallings, I'll be here come race time. So this team certainly has a lot of depth on that pit wall. Yeah, yesterday was the first day he'd ever missed in his professional career as an engineer at a racetrack, and he did not like it. Chuck Houghton did a good job standing in for him. Of course, they worked together on the team. The Orbit BMW has helped Romain Dumas out there. That has split first and second, and Fogarty's going to make that ground all up again. Still plenty of time to go. Driver changes to come. Could this be the captain's first win in Grand Am? It is a Penske car that leads the way right now in the Montreal 200. And have a look at this snapshot of Penske racing in the various series that they have competed in. Of course, this is not all of the series they've competed in, just a, uh, a small snapshot there. And look at the, the, the success and the wide variety of series they've competed in. And right down the bottom, question marks everywhere. Not yet to stand on the top step of the podium in Grand Am Rolex Sports Car Series. And it's not going to come easy today if the Gainesville boys can have anything to say about it. Here we see the pressure once again from John Fogarty. is so strong in the braking zone. And that is really a key element to being fast around this race circuit. You really want to try and trim the cars out. That not only affects the downforce through the corners, it affects the downforce in the braking zones too. But the 99 boys have really been the masters of really creating a car that has good ability in the braking zones throughout the year. And do you remember that breaking zone 12 months ago when he and Scott Pruitt came together? John was livid after he was handed down a penalty. Some argued it was the right call, some argued it wasn't. It was what it was, and John had to do the penalty. And he's being very mindful of that right now in his pursuit of Romain Dumas. Leading and leading well. Order is Dumas, Fogarty, Pruitt. That hasn't changed. Now John is trying to make the most of this traffic. The Gainsco Riley tried to go around the outside, and Dumas is doing a wonderful job through the traffic. He really is holding his poise very well here, just showing his experience. He's been in this situation so many times, running in multiple class racing before, of course. But it is tricky around this racetrack. I mean, you've just got to read that traffic and time it perfectly and position the race car. You're not necessarily going to take the fastest line through the corner, but position the race car where the guy behind you cannot get by. Behind Pruitt is Brian Frizzell. So as far as the three championship contending teams, it is power to the Gainsco gang at the moment. What's going on at SunTrust, Chris? Well, just a couple laps ago, David Donnie, he was right up underneath the gearbox of Brian Frizzell. Now Brian Frizzell really pulling his way out. Wayne, a lot of these teams were complaining that it was taking a long time to get tires up to temp. It looks like that was the issue with the 10 car. Now that car's looking very fast. Yeah, we've been struggling with uh, when there's cold conditions on new tires. But we seem to be running the same lap as the leaders. You know, we've obviously just lost uh, a lot of time in the pit. We had a problem on the right front. But he's doing a good job. It's still a long way to go. You had that blowout at Watkins Glen. It dropped you a little bit further back in the championship. Is there still time for you guys to claw your way back to the front? Well, obviously, we've got to look at every race. We're going to try and win every race. But um, as you can see now, the Porsches are really fast. So uh, we've got something new to the mix. But, um, you know, I guess the, the pressure is probably on those guys more than it is with us because of the deficit. So we can concentrate on just trying to win a race here. Well, Brian Frizzell is laying down some of the quickest laps on the racetrack, so maybe today will be their day. Well, Wayne certainly brought up a good point with the Porsches now looking a bit more competitive. That will play a fact here, because think about this. If the 99 car is able to get around the 12 car, the 12 car will then pad the points back to Pruitt. So that could be a significant factor here in the final three rounds of this championship. This is good stuff. Good head-to-head -head fighting at the front of this field. We mentioned the history, the enormous history of Formula One at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. Who was the Frenchman, the last Frenchman to win in F1? Oh, it's a problem for the 60 car here, Lee. Mark Patterson has had an eventful day here in Montreal, to say the least. No damage done. He's able to point it in the right direction and get going again. Qualified really well. Seventh spot, which was then promoted up to six with the 58 car problem after qualifying, getting put to the back. 
but the Mike Shank boys just can't seem to catch a break. We saw Valiente get into the 59 machine. He had to suffer a drive-through penalty, so things not going their way again today. Dumas will hand over to Timo Bernard. Fogarty will hand over to Gurney, but not before he really puts the fight to this man here in the Penske Porsche. He's hounding him now with less than an hour and 20 minutes to go. He is really using all of the road. He's all the way over that curbing on the exit of that final chicane, just looking for the exit speed to maybe be a little bit closer and then be in position into these brake zones to take advantage. Remember the two aspects on our race analysis, 30 minutes every driver must do to get championship points and every car must stop within the first 45 minutes. Those criteria have been satisfied here, not a problem. What's the team leader think about the 99, Chris? Well, he's watching his car go around the racetrack right now, and Bob, points are so important, three races to go here. How much pressure are you putting John on to try and take the lead of this race? Well, you John, you John knows what to do. We've, uh, we, we've already told him a couple of times to be careful. We're really not racing the 12 car. Uh, all the guys get a stake if we beat that car, but uh, the, the points are better for us. So we'll, we'll leave it up to him. This season is starting to look a lot like 2007, the battle between the 01 and the 99. What did you guys learn from that year to try and beat the 01 car? Well, I mean, the, the, there really is no magic to it. You got to stay on the track, obviously, and you got to be there at the end. That's the key. In 2007, it all came down to that last round at Salt Lake City. Isn't it amazing? The last three years, it's been the 01 and the 99 coming down to the championship fight in the final few rounds. That's where we are now. After today, folks, only two races left. Salt Lake City, look at Fogarty. He's as close as he's been. Pulls out of the draft. Is there an inside move in the 13? Yes, there is. Dives it down at the inside very late on the brakes. I don't think Dumas will be able to respond here coming off that final chicane. Fogarty gets the hammer down. Just a brilliant move. He waited. He was patient. He got in prime position there. Dumas went to the right, eventually went back to the normal line, and that's where John Fogarty took advantage of the situation. Did you see the car moving under heavy braking? That was right to the limit from John Fogarty. The GT class leading car is in. The 87 Farnbacher Lowell's and now Lee King gets out and Dirk Werner will take over the driving duties for this car. They're hunting for a championship. They said they know they have to be careful because everyone else is going purely for wins at this point. But at the same time, Lee said we don't want to do too much different because what we've been doing has been working and they're having some issues now getting something plugged in here there for Dirk. It doesn't look like it's going to affect their time overall as they're still fueling up the car. Just behind them, we also see the Dempsey Racing number 40 come in. So Charles Esplanade will be taking over those driving duties for Joe Foster. Patrick Dempsey, of course, not able to drive uh, this race because of uh, he's still filming a Warner's Brother movie. He's very disappointed, but hopefully we'll get to talk to him later in this race, guys. This fueling, Kelly, has taken an eternity. You see the consternation with the crew. You can see it in their body language, like what's going on with this refueling. The 40 is leapfrog, so it looks like they may not be getting fu fuel flow. They wait for it to bubble. There it is. That was a very slow fuel load going in there, so I'm not sure if the guy didn't have it connected when he initially inserted it into the tank. Bit of a mystery, that one. But talking about being conservative, Kelly, I am very surprised that these guys started on slick tires. We've since found out that information. We saw the 30 car, Tom Sutherland, immediately go to the front. And that was because Lee King was on slick tires. I'm amazed at that decision with the championship on the line. It'll take a couple of laps for Werner to get into the groove, but then watch him go. You're watching the Montreal 200 here on speed. More when we come back an auction it is truly an event welcome back to montreal folks lee diffie along with calvin fish kelly Stavist, and chris neville and just think cal if you hadn't bought that big grandiose house you could have gone to that <laughs> barrett jackson auction huh? it said real sellers when we saw dorsey <laughs> not buyers we're back and this is john fogarty for bob stallings gains co racing team doing a wonderful job out in front he's gapped romain dumas by two seconds since we last were with these guys Dumas falling back a little bit. Pruitt is stepping it up in third. He's just done a 134 flat. He's still, however, 11.5 seconds behind the leader. Nine sevens back. Oh, and Dirk Werner has run off track. Championship leader in GT has run off track. And that air intake is full of grass. Look at that front grill. Yeah, that's not good news. And you very rarely see Dirk make a mistake in one of these cars. So not sure if it was the cold tires or whether there's uh, traffic involved. There we see a piece of something coming 
the drift from underneath. He's obviously dislodged something with the off. You remember when he left pit lane, he was really wide to the side of the track. He yep. just looked a little unsettled. Uh, whether there was something not going right in the cockpit, we'll find out more. Kelly's there. Well, you're exactly right. We're getting reports now that Dirk feels a, a pretty severe vibration, enough that they had already planned before he went off-roading to bring him back into the pits. Now, incidentally, on that last pit stop, the reason they were having trouble with the fuel hose was that it was, they said the car was a little bit too far away from the pit wall, so they were having problems getting pressure. But now they've got this vibration issue to deal with, so we'll see what they check for here when they bring the car in. Well, we talked about executing. They've certainly done that to this point in the championship season, but Lee King did his job, brought the car in, but then was a little bit wider the marks in pit lane, then some other problems, and uh, suddenly your day can get away from you. And even with that big 31-point lead, you have a disastrous race. Suddenly you feel the heat and the pressure from the competitors right behind you. Updating you in GT as we wait for Werner to come to his box. Tom Sutherland for the race's edge leads the way over Eric Lux and Sylvain Tremblay is third in class. There you see the fuel hose. They try and minimize the length of that because if you have a really long fuel hose, it gives you some flexibility in terms of that mistake happening in terms of where the car is positioned, but it takes longer to get the fuel in the tanks. So they try and make that as short as possible. Crew are checking out underneath the car, just making sure there's nothing wrong. Better to find the problem now than send Dirk back out there and have a further incident. There's a lot of attention on the front left. Bob Sanderson is the man down there on that wheel. He's the crew chief. Knows Porsches inside and out. And now he sends his championship hopeful. They're trying to get two championships in three years, Farn Bacalols, in Grand Am GT competition. Quite the accomplishment. The only good news is they just took another splash of fuel, so we'll have a few more laps of fuel on board. And a uh, minute 10 is a long time to go for one of these GT cars. He'd need help with caution to do it without coming back for more fuel today. Hour 10. Hour 10, sorry. <laughs> I got into a month that I've gone today. <laughs> And that front uh, grill has been cleared somewhat for Dirk Werner. The overall leader flashes by. That's John Fogarty. Has a 2.1 second lead over Dumas. Scott Pruitt, Brian Frizzell aboard the 10. We ride with him now. Maintains his position in fourth. And David Donahue is still in the top five. Wayne Taylor talked about the fact they struggled with this car, the Delara, coming up to speed in cold temperatures, getting that tire temperature into its sweet spot, the working window. And that was what happened in qualifying yesterday. Qualifying was disrupted with the car going into the gravel trap. So everyone lost their rhythm a little bit. And this car, the number 10 car, qualified down on the third row of the grid, which was a surprise to everyone. The ambient temperature here in Montreal is quite cool. And this team, along with many others, were quite pleased about that because they, like many others, were experiencing major brake issues. Yeah, and that's really a big factor. So many of these teams, when we talked to them this weekend, have made some adjustments on their brake package to make sure they didn't have similar problems to last year. But these cooler conditions really, really help. You've got to be careful that you just don't have too much cooling. Otherwise, the brakes go in the other direction. They won't be effective and have a really good bite when you hit the pedal. Yeah, Cal, these teams saying that this place is by far the hardest track we go to on brakes. After cars have done a cool-off lap and they come back to pit lane, some of the temperatures they were seeing were over 900 degrees. Any other racetrack we do go to, that number's more down near 700 degrees. So a lot of teams really working on efficiency, getting more air to the brake systems. But today, not too big of a worry because it's much cooler. Yeah, I spoke to uh, the guys from PFC Performance Friction about that situation. They said last year we were seeing temperatures on the caliber. Forget the rotors in the pads, the caliber itself, 450 degrees, which means inside the fluids then at 550. When does it boil? It boils at 550. So you've got to really add a lot more cooling, not only to the, the rotors and the pads, but also the caliper itself. On board the 61, Mark Wilkins, hard at work. He's done a good job, and he's been arm wrestling Christoph Bouchou for the last handful or so laps. They've been going blow for blow, and we showed you earlier that Christoph uh, shortcut the last complex, the turn 13-14 complex. He took care of that and allowed the 61 to go back by, so that was okay, and then obviously he uh, didn't have to do his drive-through penalty, and now he's got back ahead of Mark Wilkins and cleared out somewhat. Well, Mark is struggling a little bit right now. They've really set this 61 car up for the finishing driver, which is Bert Frizzell. And these guys like a slightly different race car. Last year, Brian and Mark was a little bit of better combination in terms of they like the same setup. 
Mark likes a little bit of understeer in the car. Bert likes a little bit of a loose car. So right now they've set the car up for Bert, so he'll come on strong to finish this race. One guy who's had a wonderful time with his first time in Grand Am is Brendan Gorn. Let's hear from him. He's with Kelly. Another one of our NASCAR guys just stepping out. Brendan, what was that first stint like for you here in Grand Am? I wish I was a little bit quicker, but uh, you know, my, one of my main goals was to keep it on the lead lap in contention. I didn't miss one shift. I didn't drive it off anywhere, and I gave it to Andy with, with good brakes, good tires. and So now we're going to watch one of the best in GT class, hopefully go win. And wow, it would be fun to be on a podium in my first race ever. We know Andy Lawley, he knows all about the transition from sports cars, stock cars. How valuable was he as you prepared for this sports car race? Uh, my whole goal was to be within one second of him in practice, and that's what I got to. I got to one second. I was happy. The TRG bunch seemed to be happy, and it's helped me immensely for the Nationwide car. I'm really excited for the Nationwide race tomorrow. That said, what was the biggest challenge, the biggest difference getting behind this Porsche? You know, it, it's such a short wheelbase, so many things different, but the, the decision by Kevin Buckler and the guys to keep me on the slicks to start the race, great strategy move, but inside the seat, I was like, oh, no, <laughs> don't screw up now. So my buddy Carl, my dad would kill me right now. I'm so happy that that wasn't me. So that's all I could think of was my father yelling at me if I screwed that up and Buckler coming off the bench and killing me. Well, guys, Andy did say that he was pretty impressed how uh, quickly Brendan got up to speed. Thanks, Brendan. And for his first time driving a Porsche, that's a mighty effort. He and Andy Lally have some good history, too. They do. They actually went to driver school together 16 years ago, and Andy said, I've always followed his career, you know, with interest to see how he does, and now he's actually back in the driver's seat with him. So certainly a great story there, and Andy, of course, made a sensational Sprint uh, Cup debut a couple of weeks ago at Watkins Glen. And Scott Pruitt dives for pit road. The reason why he's been doing some grass cutting, some lawn mowing. Look at the front of that car. He's had a slight off-track excursion. How slight was it? Here we go, running in third place. Well, he locked up the rear brakes there. That's through the turn three, four chicane. And didn't look like the ride was too rough, but blocking those radiators off will be a big problem. And at a an hour five left, I don't think these boys can stretch if it stays green the rest of the way. He's going to need another splash for fuel. Here we see Maimo Rojas going to jump over the wall. He'll take over. He's been doing a great job here this weekend. Just really a good, evenly matched team now in terms of the driver lineup. Maimo's come a long ways in the last two seasons. Chris? Oh, guys, just had a big run down pit lane, but I'm here. And they're going to wet weather tires, guys. The rain is starting to fall again. But I just looked at a weather map, and I don't think it's going to stay long. So these guys taking a risk with the wet weather tires. <laughs> Championship leaders wow. rolling the dice. That is huge. I mean, Scott would have given the information to Timmy Keane. Go to wets, go to wets. But this is really rolling the dice. Rojas does drive well. He enjoys the wet weather conditions. But is it the right gamble? We'll find out. For those of you just joining us, this is what has happened at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. Before the green flag flew, NASCAR Sprint Cup star Carl Edwards just trashed the Aflac Delara. What a shame. Two of the big stars of this event, Edwards and Ambrose, did not even make it to green, and they were doing so well. At the start, on the opening lap, greasy conditions, and Mark Patterson just went a little sideways. John Ferrano slams into the side of Scott Tucker. There was heavy damage on the 51. Tower events, Riley. Then there was a good scrap up the front. JC France led for a little while. However, his car was getting squirrely on those worn, wet weather tires. And then there was a bit of argy-bargy between he and Michael Valiente. It was. Michael's on the slick tires, running much faster, and just came up on JC. Didn't clear him cleanly. That cost him a penalty and more damage to the 59. That's a shame. How about Chris Green and the Matt Connolly Pontiac? This young Canadian driver impressed, starting from pit lane, and he went to the lead, and he suffered some brake problems. That put a dent in his campaign. Great move, move of the day. John Fogarty on Romain Dumas for the lead of the race. They were right to the limit, both of them on their braking. That was a great move, and it got the applause of team owner Bob Stallings. Fantastic stuff. And here we see championship leader Scott Pruitt taking an off there as we start to get some drizzle. Shortcuts the chicane, had to pit, grass in the radiators. They went to wets. Is that the right move? Can you believe that stat there, considering these weather conditions? Zero cautions. No. <laughs> we thought this was going to be caution plagued. And that's why it's so hard to really form your strategy. You'd have to think in these dodgy conditions, there would be plenty of yellow, and you can really roll the dice, maybe make an early green stop, you know, change tires, whatever. You just never know.
So okay. rain starting to fall, as you can see. And the choice, the big thing that we're going to follow here is the 01 Telmax Chip Ganassi Lexus Riley with Memo Rojas behind the wheel has gone for wet weather tyres. Other teams have stopped and gone for scuffs like the 99, right, Chris? Yeah, we saw that great battle with John Fogarty and Romain Dumas out there. You guys came in doing something different than the 01. You went with slicks as the 01 went with wets. Oh, I, I didn't know that. I thought they stayed on slicks. Uh, I think the times indicate the slicks are, are the ticket right now, but... um. If it gets wet, we're in trouble. If it gets dry, they're in trouble. So gamble on both our parts. Uh, but the Gainesco Auto Insurance cars is quick, uh, wet or dry. So uh, feel pretty good, and Alex has got to get a feel um, and let it come to him. This thing is looking like it's a real battle between the 12 and the 99 today. You guys think you have the upper hand? Um, I think if we get out in front of them, uh, we're in good shape. Uh, they got a little bit us up down the straightaways. Uh, we got a little bit on them in the corner. So pretty evenly matched, but I, I think overall pace, we're in good shape. So if we can stay in front during this next round of stops, Looking good. Well, guys, while we were also in commercial, the 10 SunTrust car came in. Max Angelelli behind the wheel. That team also went with slicks. These teams that are going with slicks, they're going with scuffs because they know a new slick tire is pretty slick out there when we have a little bit of precipitation on the ground like this. So all these teams going with scuffs gives them a little bit more grab those opening laps. Well, another team going with scuffs. This is significant is the Penske machine. They did not take the wet option. Roger Penske made the call along with John Erickson there. They're going to go with scuffs as well, Chris. That's huge. So the only team of the front runners and of the championship contenders, the Ganassi guys, on the wet weather tires. You see how serious RP is. He realizes this race is not going to be easy. They want that first win, but there's a lot of competition out there. Timo Bernard now behind the wheel has to get the feel. Has to get the feel for the grip. The conditions are changing constantly. Recently married his girlfriend, Katarina. So celebrations over there in Germany a couple of weeks ago. Now we're on board the 10 machine. Max Angelelli behind the wheel. He's dropped a little bit back in the pack. Currently running in seventh after this series of pit stops. Happy memories here at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve for Angelelli. They won in the inaugural year for Grand Am here in 2007. He enjoys this track. He said the most challenging thing is, people talk about it being drag strips and hairpins. He said the most challenging thing is how hard to hit these ripple strips. How hard to ride them, how high do you go? You can't be too shallow, you can't be too deep. It's a fine line. And he said if you hit it just right, Boy, you can get through these chicanes quickly. And that's the key in the dry lead. But remember, in the wet, those curbs are painted. So if you start to look, you can use them on entry. But if you're using them coming off the corners... You'll end up like Carl. <laughs> exactly. You're going to turn it around. Car coming out of pit lane there. It's Christoph Bouchou, the 55. Yes, it is. Supercar life. He was the race leader. He inherited the lead. How about this talking point? Wet weather tires for the 01. What does Scott Pruitt think? Scott, you guys made the call to go to wet tires. Everybody else is going with slicks right now. Are you guys a little bit premature on that call? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm, I, I, I was surprised. We came in, I got off a little bit. The, the track had started getting slippery out of my family at home. And I got off through the grass. We picked up some stuff, and that's when you know, want to come in and check it out and make sure there was no problems. And then uh, here we go in the rain. So I'm not, there's a lot of race left to be played out here, but mm, I don't know. <laughs> So obviously it wasn't you that made the call. I uh, know. Mm. Thanks. Well, the Romain problem. De... Sorry about that, Lee. Romain Dumont took the number 12 Penske Porsche from third to first, but Fogarty got you back. Everyone's making a decision on those tires. What are the conditions like out there? Well, now for sure it started to rain. The last 10 laps, you know, it was quite tricky already. You can see a few grizzling. So I was taking care of Fogarty pit before. I don't know if we gain or if we lose time. You know, I asked to stay out a little bit more. So we'll see now with Timo. I mean, it was, was good fun. You're out there trying to hold off the 99. What kind of a difference has that extra RPM, the extra 400 RPMs made? Well, for sure it helped a little bit, but uh, it's possible it's not enough. <laughs> so no, I was, I mean, I'm very happy that we can fight again now. You know, since the, last, uh, the first race of the year, we, we cannot do anything. So this time was fun. I overtook the 01, the 99, so it was a good car on the championship. I had fun. That's, our main target now to our just pleasure these guys are really chomping at the bit for that first win looking forward to it isn't he Timo leads at the moment and it's a healthy lead indeed they're shuffling they're changing they're diving for pit road buddy rice was as high as the top three and now he's diving for pit road as well we'll tell you more about gt when we come back speed's coverage of the rolex sports car series is presented on speed by the porsche moment 
1.9% financing and compelling lease offers on the Porsche of your dreams. As we welcome you back to Circuit Gilles Villeneuve here in Montreal. A final reminder about the Chipfoose Pirelli Edition Ford Flex giveaway to win this wonderful car designed by legendary designer Chip Foose. All you have to do is identify today's code word. Look for it carefully. Go to grandam.com forward slash Foose. Enter this prize word to have a chance at winning and you will be on your way, if you win this particular round, on your way to Homestead Miami Speedway for the season finale. And you may be lucky enough to get those car keys from Chip Foose himself. Yes, you're seeing correct. Double yellows, full course yellow for the first time today. And the reason why is there was heavy contact out on track. You can see debris to the left there between the Childress Howard Motorsports Crawford and the 60. Well, <laughs> the 60 and the 2 seem to have a bit of a history going on here in recent events. Certainly, Mark Patterson's been attacked by Rob Finley over the last couple of weekends. And here we see again Rob going down to the inside. And uh, it's Oz Negri behind the wheel right now. Just didn't expect him to make that move. And a lot of it is down to guys on tires that are coming up to temperature and just different speeds. And suddenly you get caught out. The first full course yellow, you can see down to the bottom right hand side of your screen, the 59 Brumos Porsche still being worked on, so those boys are uh, not giving up. We ride with Christoph Bouchou in the Supercar Life 55 BMW Riley, and he has been a man on a move. The Frenchman is really enjoying his first visit here to this racetrack. I mean, he has achieved so much in his career, whether it be sports car championships, winning great events like the Rolex 24 and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. What is he thinking here? It's full course yellow. I mean, I'm not sure if he's won a Mamo just to try go and faster. go as fast as he can yeah. to claw up to the pack. Remember, Rojas is on wets, Bouchou on slicks. And we understand that Timmy Keane was on the radio maybe talking about bringing Mamo to pit lane. If I was those guys, and if they don't think there's going to be enough rain here to be a factor, I'd try and minimize the damage. Give yourself some time in this race to recover and get back to the front. You can see Brian Sellers and Dane Cameron getting ready to climb aboard their respective GT machines. The Farnbacher Lowell's boys like Brian Sellers. They said, hey, you're the rainmaker and you're our good luck charm. Last time you were with us, we were both on the podium in New Jersey. Final round of stops for those who need them. Let's go to the 01 pit. Well, this is exactly what Mamo Rojas needed. He needed to get to pit lane, get some slick tires, because he was about 10 seconds slower than all the other competitors out there on slick tires. He just needed tires because they filled the car up that last time. So very quick stop. Mamo Rojas back out there, but he's be well back in the pack on the lead lap. He is going to have the pressure put on him right now. They were leading the championship coming into today's race. Now he's mired in the middle of the pack with the guys who are right behind him in the championship running towards the front. So he's got to be careful, but he's got to make some moves. He can't afford to have a big point swing here today. Uh, fuel to burn, of course. He's topped up. Let's pay some credit to the 90 Spirit of Daytona Coyote. There it is right there, just to the right of your screen. Uh, Buddy Rice, Indy 500 winner, has done a very good job in tricky conditions. He's just handed over to this year's Rolex 24 winner, his co-driver uh, in that car, in the Brumos car, earlier this year, Antonio Garcia. Had so. an engine problem yesterday, Lee, which really stopped them from making qualifying session. They had, uh, they believe, a ring may have gone, which caused the crank crankcase pressure to... Uh, go over the threshold and change the motor late yesterday so didn't get a lot of track running and that really hurts you on these two-day programs do you like it close with just two weeks to, two rounds to go it would be all tied if they were to finish as they are right now and the SunTrust boys would gain two points they're currently 14 out of the lead right now two at a time not enough at this stage of the championship so the 10 needs to do something dramatically different and the pressure is on. I believe that points of as of now is before Rojas made his pit, pit stop. stop. So uh, that's going to change dramatically here with him mired in the middle of the pack. We spoke about the Indy 500 winner, Buddy Rice. He is building his experience in the Grand Am Rolex Sports Car Series. How did he enjoy that run, Kelly? Well, he and Antonio Garcia have really been uh, in the process of de developing this number 90 car. Buddy, it had never been wet. It didn't get too bad here, but how did it hold up under those uh, initial wet conditions? Yeah, it wasn't too bad because I think, you know, it sprinkled and once we got out there, the truck was already wet. Um, we didn't have a big downpour. I mean, obviously we have some leaks and stuff we know we need to fix now, but, you know, we made some some progress from yesterday and in, uh, in the practices to, to the race. We've gotten a little bit closer to the pack and, you know, we're definitely working on it. You know, some of these tracks are really fast at and we're in the game and, 
some of these tracks we come to are uh, not as close as we want to be. So uh, we'll keep working on it. You know, see what happens here at the end. But, uh, you know, these guys at Spare Daytona have been working really hard, and it's going good. You said the most important thing was really just to get the laps on this car, get it to finish. It hasn't finished yet. Besides that, though, do what, what kind of a move do you think you guys can make here in the final uh, closing minutes of this? Well, it looks like I think we've gone down a lap now, and we're the first car on the lead on the down one lap to the leader. So I don't think we're going to be able to do much now. It's too hard to, to make something up unless something really weird happens. But uh, you know, we'll just keep pounding out the laps here. We'll just uh, you know, get some more time on the car, and uh, you know, we'll get ready for the season finale. All right, thanks, buddy. This is the new generation Coyote, and they had some harsh luck at the recent round at Watkins Glen where they really should have been in the top five. But one step at a time, and Troy Fliss and the Spirit of Daytona team are doing a wonderful job. Speaking of an outstanding job, how about the Racers Edge Mazda? Dane Cameron standing by. We say well done, Tom Sutherland, for an awesome opening stint. Well, fantastic job by these guys once again. I think Chris is down there. Yeah, guys, they did not want to see this caution come out because this car was 25 seconds in front of the second place car. So they were just getting ready to come in when the caution flags flew and they had to give up that 25 second lead. But a great outing by these guys. So often we see the Mazdas of the 70 and the 69 catching victories. But I think this 30 team and also the 40 team are really right on the brink now of getting a victory for Mazda. This team coming away with that third place podium finish back at Watkins Glen just a couple weeks ago. The car is down. The 40 car beats about the 57 car beats about still waiting on fuel on the 30. Wow this is costly look at the rest of the GT field streaming out here and now Dane Cameron gets the release and he's got some work to do mate and he's got names ahead of him like Sylvain Trompe and Robin Liddell and just keep adding the list Andy Lally very established GT names. We mentioned right at the top of this show, folks, that it's an exciting week next week for the Grand Am Rolex Sports Car Series. For the first time ever, these cars and teams and drivers will get to experience the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That's right, the Brickyard for an official Grand Am test. Is it news about the future? Will we see Indianapolis on the annual Grand Am schedule, maybe in 2010 or 2011? Who knows? We'll find out. But here are the thoughts of the drivers about that exciting test. Awesome. From a small child, you watch the Indy 500, and, and then the Brickyard 400 has been such a, a stellar event for NASCAR. Uh, to have Grand Am there and the Rolex Series go there for this test is really exciting. It's going to be pretty cool. I think it's going to be exciting to go back in, in something different. It's going to be cool. I mean, being a sports car guy, I mean, you, you know of the Brickyard, but you never think you're going to get to actually you know, circulate around the road, the road course there. So just real excited for the team. I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, how much better can it get? For us to go there with the Grand Am cars, to run on a road course, and, and to do what we do there and get that opportunity, I think is just tremendous. One team owner who is very excited about going there, who's going to put his driving suit back on, is Kevin Buckler from the Racers Group. And also Wayne Taylor. Can you believe that ah, one? They're all coming out of they retirement. They have a Masters huh? division or something <laughs> for next week. They're just all excited about running their cars at the Brickyard, and so they should be. So one and only caution of this race, and time is running out. This is a shorter than normal uh, Grand Am event, just two hours in length. There's just over 41 minutes remaining, so it's going to be a mad dash to the end. Will this be the day that we call Penske across the line first in Grand Am? It's their first full season in Daytona prototype competition, and Timo Bernard has the Verizon wireless machine at the front of this field. Ready to go back racing, ready to go green. Will Penske have the advantage? Watch for the red car, third in line. Alex Gurney is keen for his first win at Circa Gilles Villeneuve. He gets through on the inside of Garcia. He really is. There's some lap cars there in the mix. The 90 cars are lap down, as is the 61. But right now, Gurney is on the tail of Timo Bernard. Can he have the advantage that it seemed like his teammate had in the earlier going? Third car is Max Angelelli. He's not third in the order, he's fifth in the order. But watch for the SunTrust Delara. Big championship points implications right here, right now. Right now, Rojas is lined up in the fifth position. So, bit of a surprise there. I thought they were going to suffer bigger damage than that in terms of their track position, Lee, by having a pit there and throw the slicks back on. So, not too bad. The car in front of Angelelli is driven by the older brother of Max's teammate. It's Bert Frizzell as he whips by the 61A Motorsport Ford. Next one on his list, 
is Antonio Garcia. You get the view from Bert Frizzell now, and away goes Angelelli. You can see him there fighting the grip there, coming off that chicane. Bert Frizzell are behind the wheel right now of the 61 machine, but look up front as Timo Bernard leading the way from now Alex Gurney in the 99 machine. Action there in the thick of the pack. There's Memo Rojas trying to fight his way through. Drama's there for the 55 supercar life machine of Christoph Bouchou. What was going on there? There was a lot of smoke coming out of the back of that car. Valiente has got his way around Rojas. Last time they crossed the stripe, he was behind him. He's made a couple of positions up on Bouchou and Memo Rojas. Remember, Rojas' tyres would not be up to pressure and temp. The other boys are already on those slicks. That'll be a difference. Well, Michael Valiente now feels he has a chance. He's been really hit with the bad luck stick so many times this season. He says, just put me in a position. Give me a chance. Watch that blue and black number six down into the braking zone of one. It's damaged on the front right. That's not bothering Valiente. Doesn't seem to right now. It doesn't seem to be affecting the performance. So, yeah, these, they see the smoke coming off the back of the 55. Was that damage from Valiente the incident with the 59? Or did he get together with a 55 on his way through? One of about eight Canadians competing in this event here today, Michael Valiente. He's from the West Coast, though. He's from Vancouver. But he's competed on Circuit Gilles Villeneuve many times and loves it. Even did a NASCAR Nationwide here, event here a couple of years ago. And Rojas is now going to have his car start to get into a rhythm. It's going to find that sweet spot where the tyre pressures, the tyre temps come up. And now Tim Keane needs to be on the radio talking him through the final 38 minutes of this race. We're getting reports that the 57 Stevenson Motorsports Pontiac spun coming onto the main straight. Let's have a look. Look at this, Shamaz. There you see the 40 car taking that shortcut. And there we see Liddell taking a quick... That's pretty cool. He just got back on the power while he was still on this green painted area, I think. It cuts across at the last moment, just tries to jump on the gas pedal. No grip there, of course. Loops it around, loses a couple of spots. Michael Valiente in the 45 of Ryan Dial are fighting it out on the 40 oh. and the 30 have got together. Dane Cameron and Charles Espenlau. That was possibly for the lead. Tremblay's right in the mix there too, but two of the front running three cars have gotten together there. Well, Patrick Dempsey, team owner, is here today. He's watching, obviously not driving. Would love to be in the driver's seat and would love his team to get a Grand Am GT victory. What happened here between Dane Cameron and Charles Espenlaub? Look to the right of your screen. There they come, coming down into this hairpin turn. Andy Lally goes through on the inside. Oh, Espenlaub just loops it by himself. Cameron had nowhere to go. And the rest of the GT field just steamed by these guys. They lost about six positions there. All right, let's hear the thoughts of Hollywood actor Patrick Dempsey. Kelly? Well, and Patrick Dempsey looking on to see just what happened there with Charles Esplanade. I'm sure that's a little bit disappointing as he was running there for a podium spot, but you have to be really impressed with how far this team has come this season. Oh, it's been an amazing season. We're getting close, and uh, we're making mistakes sometimes, and sometimes we're not. And um, we'll, get, we'll get there eventually. I mean, it's been an exciting race. It's been great to be a part of it. I mean, it started off in a, a great fashion. It's too bad for Carl. It's a shame for him. And that team, um, we'll just keep going and see how it turns out. D disappointing to have to stand here on the sideline? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a tough profession. Are you getting, are you getting some? <laughs> um, I'm getting a lot of uh, information right now that I shouldn't <laughs> pass on to you. <laughs> All right. We'll let it slide, Chris. Well, Tom Southern is, well, Sutherland has finally had a chance to cool off after that great run. But because the caution came out, you guys had to give up a lot of positions right now, that 30 car back, just uh, inside the top 10 right now. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of concerned right now. Uh, we just had a little bit of contact with Espen Love in the 40 car, but, uh, you know, he's out there. I think he's doing fine. I mean, the car was great. I really got to give credit to these guys. I mean, the, the 30 click away Mazda was just outstanding. Um, I mean, we, we led there for a little bit. We took a little gamble with the rain tires, but, um, you know, after we put the dries on, we were just able to put down some good lap times, and uh, we were really going strong up until uh, that contact just now. But we'll see what happens in the rest of the race. Well, uh, guys, this team is ready to break through. And just as we sort things out, the track gets dry. The rain is starting to come again, guys. The rain is starting to fall. And some of these teams are starting to get their wet weather tires back up on the wall. And yeah. you can see Timo Bernard. He's getting loose everywhere. So, too, was Alex Gurney. And Angelelli is taking it easy as well. Yeah, Timo was really loose there coming off that chicane. We understand the 99 car may have had a minor off there. Lost a little bit of 
track position there in terms of maintain second position. Let's see if we can find the replay. Oh, the 70, that's the leader in GT, Sylvain Tremblay, the local boy. He so wanted oh. a victory here in the place where he grew up. Damage to the front hood there. Look at those conditions. There you see the 40 car again. Espen Lab just really struggling for grip. It's Sylvain. hard to explain how tricky these conditions get when you're on slick tires and suddenly you get just a little sprinkle like this of rain. It's literally like being on ice. You have zero grip. You think you've slowed down enough and it's still not enough. Let's find out what happened to Sylvain Tremblay. It has obviously gone nose in, but how? Whoop. One of the TRG Porsches. Uh, Craig Stanton just dropped a wheel off. The Matt Connolly car gets sideways. Sil was really well over that curb there. And we talk about the paint on those stripes and those curbing. Just had zero grip. He was really loaded up on that right rear tire coming off that chicane. Here we see it fighting with the 21 car. I think you had to check up a little bit there. You heard the throttle application checked up, went a little bit wide, and then was on that painted curbing. Let's show you what happened to John Fogarty as well, down in turn one. Alex Gurney there just locking up the rears, going straight through, nice and carefully back on, but he is immediately slowing his pace down. He realizes that the conditions have got bad. The 61 are in, they were a lap down. Can they work some strategy magic here and get back on that lead lap? Look how hard the rain is falling. Tough day for both the 61 and the 51. The AIM Autosport team has had a very trying day at a venue that has brought them so much joy in the past. And you are just mentally exhausted in these conditions in terms of the driver and just the grip level is changing constantly. Oh, this is what we didn't want to see. Sill has pulled it behind the wall. Day, Leading the race league. What a tragedy. Done. Day done for the man who grew up here in Montreal. Now Florida is home. This race is over for Sylvain Tremblay. The one that they really felt they could win. Tricky, tricky conditions with just a little over half an hour remaining. If you're regular visitors to speedtv.com, you will be familiar with the voices of speed. That's right, get the latest racing news, commentary, and exclusive analysis from speedtv.com's personalities and industry experts like road race specialist Patrick Long, David Brabham, and many more. That's speedtv.com for the voices of speed. We welcome you back to Montreal. Just crazy weather conditions, simple as that, and it is creating havoc for the guys out there behind the wheels of these beautiful cars. Check out Timo Bernard, race leader. Look at him there, he just gets wide going through one of those chicanes. Can't get it to change direction quickly enough. Didn't look like there's any possibility of damage to that splitter. Look at that, just zero grip. Straight on with the 58 machine. That was a little bit of a hip check there by the 55. Yeah, and that's the trouble when you're in traffic or you suddenly have to race someone. It's one thing if you're just thinking about what you want to do to get it through the corner and guide it through there, but suddenly if someone else is involved, you just have zero chance of making that sudden move. While we're away, there was a flurry of pit stops. Chris, tell us about it. But you guys say that weather is playing havoc for these drivers, also playing havoc for these crew chiefs and engineers. I mean, smoke is coming out of these guys' ears because as soon as this track got wet, the rain has passed. It is not raining anymore. The entire field is on wet weather tires again. And this track is going to be drying very quick. My goodness. So Bryce Miller there down one of the escape roads. They had a troublesome day yesterday. He lost a gearbox, put a new one in. That had a problem. They had to basically make one good gearbox out of two. What a sensational debut they had at Watkins Glen, leading the race with Kevin Roush, and then had that unfortunate incident with Max Angelelli in the late going with severe damage to the car. And as crazy as this day is here in Montreal, how about that? The 57 Stevenson Motorsports Pontiac after spinning, coming onto the main straight, Robin Liddell is now leading the class. Never say it's over until it's over. Andy Lally is second and Brian Sellers is third. That's in GT overall. It's this man here, Timo Bernard. 
in the Verizon Wireless Penske Porsche, who has a sizable 12 and a half second lead over Alex Gurney, then Max Angelelli. Well, the advantage that Rob Nadell has being a Scotsman, he thinks it's actually dry out there right now. <laughs> sort of weather they have there on a normal basis, but uh, certainly good to see him back. And the 01 has had an off. Rojas behind the wheel. We see grass there. Is it a temperature deal or are they doing another tire change? Looks like Gallet tires are just Calvet uh, 01 just went by and it's definitely loaded up with grass, but the team is going to take time to do a uh, tire change here, get them back on slick tires. You guys are talking about the 57 leading the class. I just checked with Mike Johnson. He said, we didn't come in. As crazy as it was down here, that's one car that I didn't notice, but they stayed out. So Robin Liddell is also one of the only other cars out there that's on slicks. Rojas is down and away. One of the first prototypes going back over to slicks. Well, let's rewind the clock 12 months ago. They were eighth. They, being the 57 team, they were eighth with about four laps to go, and in the end, they won the race. Mike Johnson told Calvin I yesterday, he apologized to the team. He said, that was my silly call, my silly strategy. I'm sorry I put the team in this difficult position. And in the end, it all worked out. <laughs> worked out great. <laughs> but you see right now, Rojas really struggling when he came out of pit lane. His tires are cold. If you stay on slick tires, you're going to maintain some temperature within that tire. So if the conditions are tough, you can still sort of scramble your way around. For Rojas right now, he's not only on slicks with no real adhesion, he has no tire temperature whatsoever. So it's going to take him two or three laps. There you Whoa. see him. Look at that. Fighting for grip. That is amazing stuff. Great car control by Mamo. A championship leader trying to keep his act together here in very difficult conditions. You're trying to be cautious, but you're trying to go as hard as you can because you've got to get as many points as you can. Well, it's a double-edged sword. Look oh. at that sideways coming off the corner. If you go too slow, you're not going to generate that tire temp. So you've got to push it. You've got to push it. Push that tire. Load that tire. Try and generate some temp. Updating you with the order. It's Timo Bernard with 11.2 seconds over Alex Gurney now. So that's come in a bit. Max Angelelli is third. Michael Valiente is as high as fourth. Some relief for Mike shank racing good stuff there and then we'll update you on the positions as they come through robin liddell andy lally brian sellers top three in gt who will prevail on this crazy day september 6th here on speed at 5 p.m eastern it is NASCAR race day built by the Home Depot and it rolls into Atlanta Motor Speedway with only two races to go before the chase. JR, Jimmy, Kenny, Wendy and Hermie get you revved up at Atlanta for all the championship implications. Things are getting very, very interesting. They are here too in Grand Am because look at this, if they stay where they are, the Gurney Fogarty combination, the 2007 champions will have a four point advantage. So it's done a complete flip flop there. Ganassi and Gaines Co. switch positions. They would leave here and head to Salt Lake City with a four-point lead. And Frizzell and Angelelli for SunTrust, they'd come in two points. But as we said earlier, that's not enough. But I'd be amazed if that stays constant throughout the course of these last 22 minutes because right now we've got the 0-1 out there on slicks and the other front runners on wets. And the 99 is in pit lane. They're making the call, Chris, it looks like. Yeah, the 99 coming in. It looks like the SunTrust boys are starting to set up for a pit stop too. So these guys deciding this track is starting to dry out. I walked over to the team, put my hand on the tire that's going on the uh, right front corner right now. And it's a tire that just came off that car. So a lot of heat still left in that rubber. I'm sure that uh, air pressure is still probably up there too. So Alex Gurney is going to have to go out and probably fight himself around a very slick racetrack, but it is drying quickly. And he's back out in the fight. At the point of entry to pit lane, Alex was eight and a half seconds behind Timo Bernard. Let's see how this one shakes out. Valiente had got himself as high as third in the Mike Shank Racing Ford, so he's made great progress. Whoop, whoop, hang on to it, Alex. But Almost look. ran off the track on exit. Yeah, we talk about it. You got to get back into that groove. It's so different. Just your steering speed, how fast you turn your hands on the wheel is so different when you have grip to having zero grip. Otherwise, the car will just goes straight on you. But looking at the last lap time, Rojas on those slicks was still about eight or nine seconds slower than the fastest wet weather runner. So they must just be looking at the sky, looking at the track conditions and deeming that the track is going to come to them. Rojas now flashes over the line at a 52 and everyone else is in the 46 to 48 range. This is a tough day 
look at New Jersey Motorsports Park. We knew what it was there. Everybody knew what it was there. It was just wet. It just teamed down all day long. These changeable conditions just are a nightmare to deal with for everybody. Well, I think for the big teams too, the guys who feel they're going to be competitive every race weekend, they don't want these unknowns. They believe right. that if the conditions are constant, they will be the cream of the crop. Well, when you suddenly throw them these curveballs every literally five, ten minutes, suddenly it's a bit of a crapshoot. Race leader, Timo Bernard. Now, let's take you back just a moment ago. This is Alex Gurney on his outlap. Locked it up, and then you could see he started to get that wheel rotating, and that's again the key. You've got to recognize that brake pressure and just try and release that pressure, but still make the corner. And I think Alex did a pretty good job there. I'd be surprised if that would be an issue. Last time around, Bernard only had a five and a half second advantage over Max Angelelli. Valiente in third, and then this man here, Alex Gurney in fourth. Christoph Bouchou for Supercar Life Racing has had a very good day. It's been an eventful day. But he is still in the top five. Ricky Taylor, too, after taking over from Canadian Mike Forrest, is running very well also. And Roger Penske and the team there will be looking and analyzing all of these lap times with guys on various combinations of tires at the 12 car. When do they need to make that call? When will they start to lose lap time? And it's a critical one. If suddenly the conditions keep going in the direction they're in, suddenly that will flip-flop and Timo Bernard will be one of the slower runners on the racetrack. The last time around, it was a 1 minute 50 for Timo Bernhard and a 1 minute 46 for Angelelli. There's the SunTrust car in the background. It is starting to zero in on the race oh. leader. Oh, hang on, Timo Bernard off on the grass on pin entry, but he's OK. He tried to carry as much speed and extend that straightaway all the way in. The pit lane speed limiter doesn't even have until you get through that little chicane coming down into pit lane. Then it's 45 miles an hour down to their pit box. Kelly is there. And Penske making the decision now to go back with the slicks. And as Chris said, with the 99, these appear to be the tires that came off earlier. They were still warm, at least the run right. Right, right front, excuse me. And now he's off. We'll have to see how much time they've lost on that pit stop. New race leader, Max Angelelli. New second place, Michael Valiente, the former teammates from a year ago. A one and two in this race. How quickly can Timo Bernard get back up to speed, get back in the groove? His teammate Romain Dumas is a little nervous back there in the pit box. Roger Penske watching anxiously as we ride with the new race leader, the man who won the inaugural Grand Am event here with former F1 driver Jan Magnussen. Angelelli loves this place. Can he take it all the way to victory lane today? This will be intriguing. Sometimes the luck is on your side in motorsport. It wasn't at Barber Motorsports Park for the SunTrust team. It wasn't at Watkins Glen when Angelelli was on a charge trying to come through the field. Maybe it's on his side today because he is still on wet weather tyres and the rain begins to fall again as Alex Gurney turns up the heat on Timo Bernard. He does. He has a couple more laps on these slick tyres. He made that pit stop a little bit sooner than Timo, so Timo's at a disadvantage. There he goes wide. Alex swings to the outside. Timo's in the grass, scrambling for grip now. Who can get the power down? first gingerly gingerly be nice and smooth with that application alex stands on it and it gets sideways two of the greatest sports car drivers in the world in really really tough conditions these boys are on slicks since they made the decision it's raining again angelelli stayed out an extra lap and then it started to rain that 99 Gainsco Red Dragon looks more like a sprint car right now. That back end is stepping out everywhere so too for the penske oh, he goes to the inside will he touch him Great control there by Alex Gurney. He stuffed it down the inside, but kept his nose off of Timo Bernard. Look at this. Dirt track and off the corners. Remember, these boys are on slick tyres. They are on dry weather tyres. Michael Valiente had just came in to change from wets to slicks, and he's gone back out, and we hear he has spun. Well, again, tyre temperature again. He waited the, the last of the guys to switch. Timo's off. Gurney slides by. Great work. Timo just couldn't hang on to it. Alex did and just drifted by around the outside. Thank you very much. All the while, our race leader, Max Angelelli, is still on the wet weather tires. 
and is out in front comfortably. Look at the concerned look from Romain Dumas at Team Penske, wondering about his teammate. Here's Valiente in the wars. Wow, just as they made that call, they were in between the two strategies. They were kind of running along with the 10 car, staying out there. They made the start for Slex, and Michael's out there, just got out. And look at that, how it snaps away from him. Just a slight curve in the straightaway there, and it was enough to get him sideways. Did a good job not to contact anything. That was from a previous incident. That was not from what we just saw there. We ride aboard the 10 with Max Angelelli. Look how greasy that track is. They deserve a break. But meanwhile, the 12 car, are they making the call to go back to wets? Yes, yes. they are. Kelly. Yes, they are. And you can only imagine how frustrating it must be for Roger Penske making this call. If they had stayed out on the wets previously longer than the other team. Came in for slicks. Now they're back on the wets, clearing out some of that grass. Timo Bernard is back on his way. What a quick grass fire there on the right front rotor as they took that wheel off. Just uh, Timo taking that off-course excursion. And look at this, 99's been off. You cannot believe how hairy it is out there right now for these guys trying to battle the conditions. With the horsepower on tap, with these Daytona prototypes and slick tires, it is just unbelievable. What happened to Alex Gurney? We're about to find out. And he just goes straight. I mean, if he turns the steering wheel anymore, it's just going to make it worse. So once it starts plowing ahead, you're along for the ride in these greasy conditions. That is a popular spot to run off track, as you can see. We've seen many cars do that today. Angelelli boasts almost a 34-second lead over the 99 of Alex Gurney. Where will Timo Bernard pop back in? Ricky Taylor is in the mix, you know. He's in the top five. And Mamo Rojas, the Ganassi pilot, is in fifth. Well, guys, sometimes it's good to just be lucky. And these, the SunTrust guys, they stayed out there. They were trying to wait till that last second to bring that car in. And they were ready for Max Angelelli to come in and get some slick tires. And then these skies opened up again. So they stayed out. They had those wet weather tires. And it is raining harder than it has all day long. So there is no way that this track is going to dry out. You've got to come in and get weather, weather tires now. When this team was trying to make that decision, Wayne Taylor was just a knot. You could see the tension <laughs> in his face. Right now, Wayne is smiling. I bet he is. Well, they said he said right at the top of the show, didn't he? All we can do is go out there and try and win races to bridge the gap in points, get maximum points. Gurney brings the Gainsco machine back in. There you see the grass in the radio. So first of all, they'll take care of this tire change. Then they'll sweep their hand across the grill, try and clean that out. This tire is so important right now in these conditions. Yeah, Cal, this team, I mean, all of these teams, the tire changes that they've done today, these guys are gonna be worn out tonight. I think these guys are doing tire changes the amount of times that we typically see at the Rolex 24. So these guys definitely earning their pay today, but Gurney on wet weather tires, just trying to go out and grab some points, but the 10 is gonna make up a lot of points today on the 99 and the 01. Well, leading the score in terms of pit stops right now is the six car, six pit stops today. Majority of the rest of the field looking at five, but there's a guy out there right now, Angelelli's only made three. That is significant. And Ricky Taylor's having a tremendous run there in third position. The Bio Racing Boys once again performing miracles with that low budget operation. The Lennox Riley with a Chevy power plant. They switched it up a little bit this time. Mike Forrest qualified and did the opening run with Ricky taking on the final stage. This car led the most laps at the recent race at Watkins Glen with Ricky Taylor behind the wheel. This team is young, it's growing, it's learning what Grand Am's all about, and its young drivers are as well. The Ganassi car back in with Memo Rojas. There you see the crew has to wait until the car hits its marks and then they can leap over the wall. That's one of the rules. You cannot be in the pit lane with the equipment, but certainly one of the best in the business in terms of these pit stops. Oh, slight delay there. Memo may have stalled it or not had it in gear. Lost about a second, not a big deal, but everything is crucial right now with this championship setting up. And as we go to a break, Robin Liddell continues to lead GT over Andy Lally and Brian Sellers. The Stevenson boys could be going for back-to-back -back wins here in Montreal.
This week on Big Block Thursday, Speed churns out the horsepower with Pink's all out at eight. Rides shotgun with the Wolfpack on Jacked at nine. And Relive, the meanest recoveries on an all you wrecked at 10. Don't miss Big Block Thursday, beginning at eight Eastern right here on Speed. Just, just under six minutes to go. Now look how close this championship <laughs> is. All of a sudden, the SunTrust duo of Brian Frizzell and Max Angelelli, who lead this race, would bring it right in to be within three points of leaders Alex Gurney and John Fogarty. Now, positions need to stay as they are now for that point scenario to play out. I wonder what the blood pressure and tension's like down there in the SunTrust camp. Well, guys, so often we talk about letting the race come to you. SunTrust guys, let the rain come to them today. Wayne, how hard was it those last couple laps when you were making the decision whether to come in or stay out? Well, obviously, Max was struggling, but obviously the other guys were struggling more. And, uh, you know, it, it appeared to us that the, the rain was going to come back. And at the same time, track position is everything. And so if we could make up time staying on the track, and it just turned out that um, the weather came back to us and it's put us in a good position here. We just flashed those points up if this thing finished right now and you kind of gave me some big eyes. Let's wait to the finish. Let's get the checkered flag first. Hey, I think I see another Taylor running around up in, uh, what is that, about third spot or something right now. Your boy's doing pretty good. You guys are going to test together at Indy this week. How great is that going to be? Oh, it's going to be just fantastic, you know, to get the opportunity for me to drive at Indianapolis Speedway, one of the only tracks in the world that I haven't driven. And, um, you know, to have Ricky there with me is going to be like a dream. So I'm, you know, I'm just really excited. I'm Thanks to SunTrust, to Shiba, and thanks to Grand Am for, for making all this happen. You know, obviously Max and Brian are our guys for the, for the championship, but it just worked out at the last second that we could get this situation to happen. So we're pretty excited. Hey, Chris, ask Wayne. I was out to dinner with him the other night, and he couldn't even read the menu without squinting. Does he have to have an eye test before Thursday? <laughs> Oh, he, you know he's talking about you. He said at dinner the other night, you couldn't read the menu without squinting. You sure you're ready to drive at Indy? Yeah, he's probably right, but I, I seem to remember he having a bigger problem than me. <laughs> but, but just look after yourself up there, Calvin, because I'm doing a better job down in the pit here. <laughs> what was funny was he ordered dessert, and then I think he thought about Thursday and said, oh, don't bring it. He's got to fit in that driver's suit this week. Three and a half minutes to go before Angelelli and Frizzell could be winners again. How about the 57 boys? The Stevenson gang, they'll be delighted. There's our two class leaders right there. Angelelli in the 10 and the 57 of Robin Liddell. What a turnaround for Robin. He had a case of food poisoning at Watkins Glen at the last round. He couldn't even drive. Spencer Pompelli had to come from TRG and just do a couple of laps and then send Andrew Davis back in the car. But Robin is back, and if he can stay here, not only will it be a repeat victory at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, it'll be the Stevenson Pontiac's third win this year. What a shame they're not in the hunt for the championship like they were 12 months ago. Well, certainly the pressure is off, Robin. I mean, if you're in a championship chase and driving in conditions like this, this would be torturous in terms of making the right decisions, keeping the car on the racetrack. But for Robin, he's so far back in the points now. Certainly Andrew's still in the hunt a little bit. But for Robin, it's just go out there, have some fun, win some races. Whoa, he's got his hands full hanging onto that Pontiac GXPR, hasn't he? They had a nightmare at Daytona. They turned it all around at the next round at Barber Motorsports Park. And then it was a tough one for them at Watkins Glen. We drift back to the 66. Brendan Gorn, NASCAR star Brendan Gorn, driving the South Point sponsored TRG Porsche with Andy Lally. Andy won the first time out here in GT with RJ Valentine a couple of years ago. And he's headed for another podium. Great stuff. Started the season off so strongly, winning the big one, the Daytona 24-hour race. Then they had to go all the way to the second race there at Daytona to get their next podium finish of the, of the season. So it's been a little bit of a struggle for the TRG boys this year. But boy, oh boy, when you put Andy Lally behind the wheel in conditions like this, he's going to perform for you. Let's go to the pit box of our GT leaders. Yeah, John Stevenson, team owner, and it looks like Lucky Rabbit's foot oh. this weekend. <laughs> Here with the 57. John, we've been talking a lot about this team, what's happening with Pontiac this year. A lot of speculation about what you guys are going to do next year. Can you kind of officially tell me anything yet? Well, unofficially, I'll give you the idea that uh, if we can continue the direction we're going, we'll be in a Camaro program for next year, and it uh, will be a two-car program. So uh, we'll just luck on that part. Uh, we just need some more finishes like we're fixing to have here. And where are you with the development of that program? Uh, it will be a Pratt Miller. There will be Pratt Miller cars and uh, they are underway. Well, 
Well, that is exciting to hear, guys. It sounds like we're going to have some pretty interesting makes in GT next year. Pretty interesting is one way you could describe Robin Liddell's <laughs> last half a lap. He is just hanging on. He is. We caught a glance at this as we were going down to Chris. Look at that move. Tires are all locked up. I think he'd already bailed on it and locked the brakes up and just gets the grip back in time. So I talked about it being fun. Maybe it's not so much fun there. Try to hang on for this win. Less than one minute to go here at Circuit Shield Villeneuve in this two-hour timed race and all of the drivers and teams will be pleased to see this one over it has been a challenging day to say the least we climb aboard with our overall and daytona prototype leader max angelelli he's won here with jan magnuson is he about to win here with brian frizzell we understand he should be coming to the white flag there it is one more to go for the suntrust delara for wayne taylor and his group we want to give a shout out to the uh, engineer there, Travis Jacobson, and congratulate he and his wife, Debbie, who gave birth to their first child, baby boy, Wyatt, uh, several weeks ago, back in July. So congratulations to both you guys, and this would be a nice present, wouldn't it, getting the victory? So Travis now has three babies to deal with. He's got his own, he's got Wayne, he's got Max. <laughs> yeah. He's got his hands full. <laughs> You're giving him a hard time today. <laughs> Final lap here in Montreal. Going through the other positions, Timo Bernard still in second. Young Ricky Taylor. How about that? He is in third at the moment. He and Mike Forrest poised for their first Grand Am podium if they can hang on for one more lap. Gurney is in fourth. Frizzell is in fifth. Darren Law, Dial, Valiente, Bushu, Mamo Rojas is right towards the tail of the top ten. Just a sensational run here by Max, and, uh, you know, he'll be sweating it. He'll be feeling the pressure. He realizes he's just got to keep it clean, but a massive lead that he's really put together here by staying on those wet tires. There's Wayne just trying to see this lap through. They don't need any more bad luck. They just need Max the Axe to bring it home, and suddenly this championship is back on. And another victory coming Delara's way. The Italian manufacturer will be delighted. There's three different power plants at this point in time on the podium. A Ford, a Porsche, and a Pontiac. Alex Gurney has just got by Ricky Taylor. So he's pushed the young duo off the podium. More championship points going the Gainesco way, which is what it's all about. They will increase that lead that we saw from the points as of now. But for Ricky Taylor, what a disappointment for the whole buyer group. He had a great run going there. Would have been unbelievable to see those guys on the podium. This was the site of the very first victory for AIM Autosport. One of its drivers was Brian Frizzell. Brian Frizzell will be a back-to-back -back winner at Circus Gilles Villeneuve, along with Max Angelelli. They're both two-time winners here in Montreal. In the wet, greasy conditions, Wayne Taylor's SunTrust Delara prevails. And some great driving, a little bit of luck, and staying on those wets when needed. Well, you need a lucky break now and again. They've certainly had some hard luck, so all credit to that team in terms of bouncing back, getting back in this championship chase. They deserve this win. All three combinations in the fight for the championship have been champions. In GT, we missed their finish last year because there was a scramble with people running out of fuel. We see it full frame, full picture now. Stevenson Motorsports back-to-back -back winners at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. Andrew Davis, Robin Liddell are congratulated there. The Brian Mark Financial Car does it again. And they are three-time winners in this year's Grand Am Rolex Sports Car Series. A wet, challenging day in Canada. We'll wrap it up when we come back. Another victory in 2009 for Max Angelelli and Brian Frizzell keeps them in this championship. And they add that one to their one at Daytona. How about that? Fabulous performance. Wayne Taylor, the team principal, is there to congratulate Angelelli. Here's Brian Frizzell. A real delight for these guys. A little bit of luck and a lot of hard work keeps them in the 09 championship hunt. Fabulous performance. It doesn't get any tougher than that. Oh, these are really difficult conditions for everyone, for the crews, for the management, for the engineers, for the drivers. But at the end of the day, the 10 car came through for a very important victory. They thought they were out of it after the last two races. Now they are firmly back in this championship. Everything to play for with two to go. <laughs> That's uh, Laz Dennis, the PR representative for the team. He's telling Angelelli just exactly what the championship situation is. I think Chris Neville's there. Chris? 
Yeah, guys, these guys grab that win back in July. They get their second win of the year. Max, talk us through the, those laps leading up to this last rain, how you must have been talking with the team. It's drying, it's getting wet. What was the communication like? We had a lot of communication. I was supposed to pit five laps before, and then they asked me, you know, stay, stay out one more lap, one more lap. And then I said, okay, this is it. My tires are done. I'm coming in. And then I saw in the, you know, my screen some water. So I said, it's raining. And then we gambled and we decided to stay out and it was raining. Back at Watkins Glen, you were behind the wheel when that right rear tire blew and essentially your championship evaporated. Now you guys are right back in it. It's incredible, you know, this is, this is Grand Am. You never know. During the race, during the championship, you never know. Anything can happen to anybody and anybody can win. Brian, you were the one sitting in the pit box down there, the team trying to make that decision. We're going wet, we're going dry. You sitting there not being part of that decision at all. How tough was that? It was tough, you know, I, gra I tapped Wayne's shoulder and I said, we got to stay out, look at the lap times, the rains are still quicker, and uh, we, you know, the team called the perfect race, that they're the reason we won, and uh, I just got to hand it off to the whole SunTrust team, it was the perfect race. Now these guys are back in the championship, it's going to go down to the wire, guys. And now Brian Frizzell adds another victory to his tally, back-to-back -back wins at this circuit, and let's paint the picture for you as far as championship. Gurney and Fogarty assume the lead. 274 with a five-point margin over Frizzell and Angelelli. That's how important that win was. It doesn't keep them in the championship. They, in fact, leapfrog the Ganassi guys, and they are tied there with a five-point margin. Whew, how about that? And 26 adrift, the Penske boys, as we go down to the final two rounds. I know it's going to be tight, and we've had such a roller coaster season. I mean, there's no telling what will happen in these final two rounds, but that pass that Gurney made for that final podium spot was important. That increased that margin from three to five. 31 points becomes 35 points for Dirk Werner and Lee Keane over Kelly Collins. That championship is incredibly comfortable and they're about to be crowned champions. Andrew Davis with that win today is nicely there in uh, just a few points further back ahead of the Speed Source duo. Boy, they must be frustrated today. That was just one that got away from them. Yeah, Sylvain will be bitterly disappointed. It would have been great for him the season that he's had, the year that he's had personally as well. To win here at Montreal would have meant a lot to him. How about our GT winners, though? What a performance from Andrew Davis and Robin Liddell. They're with Kelly. They get the win, and they get the repeat here at Montreal. Robin, last year it came down to the fuel. This year it comes down to the tires. How tough was it battling those conditions out there? It's absolutely horrendous. It's some of the hardest conditions I've driven, and it was really tough. But um, <laughs> pretty emotional, actually, just because I just felt like, you know, everything was bottled up to the end. But uh, really happy. Team did an awesome job. Car was really good. And we just had to keep our heads down, you know, made a couple of mistakes in the wet, but we stayed on slicks throughout. It was really tough to control the car. But uh, also like to thank the fan support here. It's been really awesome. And uh, thanks to Stevenson and Andrew and Pirelli Tires, Brian Mark, their sponsor. It's been a really good weekend for us. And Andrew, we kind of talked about the season that you guys have had. It hasn't gone quite as well as last year was going for you. But to get this win here with three races to go, the celebration was, uh, you had a big smile on your face. I was very happy. I mean, it has been ups and downs this year. We feel like we've squandered away a chance for the, the championship, but just this momentum will help us. We, we, we feel like we've made a huge points gain in the team championship points, hopefully up to second place. I hope we'll see when the points come out, but uh, Robin did an outstanding job. The guys worked so hard. We had to do a motor change yesterday and just the entire team, what a great effort. I had it easy in my first stint because it was only changing conditions at the start and then it started to dry out. So just hats off to everybody. Is Stevenson. Great job. Congratulations. And it is, isn't it amazing as those boys celebrate their third victory this year? The 87 team was pretty much invisible today, but yet they still extend their championship lead. They do. They keep clicking those points on the board and only two rounds to go. Time's running out for everyone else. Not done here yet from Montreal. We'll finalize things right after this quick break. Speed's coverage of the Rolex Sports Car Series is presented on Speed by Rolex, a crown for every achievement. And brought to you in part by Pirelli. Power is nothing without control. And boy, did we see plenty of control today. There was some magnificent driving on display for sure. Let's hear from more of the guys who are celebrating. We'll start with Chris Neville. Well, after three finishes of Abin outside the top 10, the Penske boys back on the podium. Timo, those changing conditions in your stint, how difficult was that? 
That was very difficult. I mean, I went out after Roma, it was raining, but he decided to, to, to put slicks for me. It was perfect. We made a good, uh, good gap to the 99 car. Then it was raining again. We came in for rains and it was dry. We came in for dries and at the end, rains again. So it was a uh, big gambling. And at the end, a uh, great job from Penske, from the whole Penske crew. And uh, for the Horizon Wireless team, we made a P2 position podium. So our third podium this year, but this victory was ours. So, but anyway. Roman, I know you've had, been very frustrated this summer, but it really looks like the car is ready to win. Are you guys ready to break through? Well, for sure, it's first time today that uh, I was able to pass the one or the 99. This never happened this year, so it's a big, <laughs> big difference. We had a good fun. I mean, you know, so far we just tried to win, to win overall, but we have fun. That's important. Well, they've got two more chances, guys. Kelly? Well, the newcomer, Brendan Gaughan, and the old vet, Andy Lawley, bringing the 66 Porsche here to uh, the podium in second place. Brendan, hey, not a bad way to start your Grand Am uh, career, huh? No, I told you, I wanted to keep the transmission in it, keep all the brakes on it so the man could do it. And I'll tell you what, you got a team with the right people, and you got TRG, you got Andy Lally, but uh, that was just unbelievable watching the last five, ten laps in the rain like that. Andy's just the man. I, I was I was sitting there, I like being in the race car so much better. That's just nerve-wracking. <laughs> It was nerve-wracking. You're out there on slicks, and it got pretty hairy there at the end, didn't it? Yeah, for, for some of the viewers at home to help understand it, the DPs all pitted, came in, got rains because they got single lugs, so it's like a 15-second stop. We're at 35-40, so we got to plan a lot more. Uh, when there's under 10 laps to go, it's pretty tough, but i got to thank these guys. TRG put together a great car. Kevin was calling the shots. Brock here has been doing a good job all year. Um, we got accident in South Point Casinos on the hill, uh, on the on the. Thanks. <laughs> on the uh, car here this weekend. Dad, don't worry it's, about it. it's, check. <laughs> it's it's a great weekend. I mean, we're we're back on the podium here in the Rolex series, and and this guy, having driven one day in a portion of his life, did an amazing job here. Gone's a talent for real. Well, and these guys are having fun, Chris. The last time the 99 was leading the points was back in the beginning of June. Alex, that was a great run. You finally got on the podium in those last couple laps. Yeah, it was a really difficult day. Uh, Championship-wise, it was it was a really good day. Um, we hate to give up, you know, a win on, with, with such a great car, but uh, a lot of difficult calls out there with with the, the conditions changing so much. Uh, on that last one, when I when I got by the Penske, I, I figured, you know, we're in really good shape, and then you know the, the conditions changed again, and, and uh, we didn't come in the pits. You know, I didn't I made the call. I didn't come in the pits when I should have. And um, anyway. We were managed to get back on the podium, so uh, overall, when you can come home uh, with a clean car on a, on a wet day, you're uh, in good shape. And they're in good shape for these last two races, guys. Yes. Interestingly, coming into this race, the 99 had not won at any of the final three racetracks. That still stays true right now, heading yeah. into Salt Lake City. Well, they felt this was their best chance of a victory with three rounds to go, but the 01 says the last two, they are ours. So it's certainly going to be interesting to see how it plays out in the SunTrust team back in the mix, too. What a day here in Montreal. It started in dramatic fashion with NASCAR star Carl Edwards crashing out before the green flag. It finished in dramatic fashion with the rain coming down and testing all of the driver's skill set for sure. Some came out a little better, some came out a little worse. It was a tough day for all. You've been watching Grand Am live here on Speed. We look forward to you joining us again as this championship draws to a close. Salt Lake City, Utah, three weeks' time. We'll see you then.